everyone to Nashville, Tennessee. We are in Music City, home to the Vanderbilt Commodores. And tonight they host the team that's on the top of the charts, the Tennessee Volunteers. A sea of black and gold with a lot of orange mixed inside. Welcome alongside Jimmy Dykes. I'm Carl Ravitch. We got black, gold, orange, and now we got the whiteboard. Tell us what you got. Well, number one, Tennessee, they check a lot of boxes. First of all, they're a complete team, a top 25 offensive and defensive efficiency team. They are the total package. Tremendous depth. Six guys can get you 20 points on any given night. I give them a check on that depth as well. Plus 20 points per game. They are smoking people, Ravi. And dominant teams, powerful teams can do that to you. Tennessee certainly checks that box. The NCAA net tells us they're a top 30 strength of schedule team. They have been tested, and think about this, a freshman never touches the ball. An old team, an experienced team, very similar to our last three national champions. All right, that's the good news for Tennessee. The bad news for Tennessee, the last time they were number one was 2008. The first game they played after becoming number one was right here against Vanderbilt, and they lost. Rick Barnes very comfortable with the group he has on the floor. An experienced group. The idea that a freshman never touches the ball is foreign in college basketball. Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravitch alongside. Ready to begin this one and their first defense and the number one role in college basketball. Kyle Alexander jumps center and he controls the ball. Expect a lot of zone tonight from Vanderbilt. First play, Grant Williams inside, 2 0 Tennessee. And expect a lot of paint touches by Tennessee, regardless of the defense that Vanderbilt throws at. That is who they are. You asked that locker room, who are we as a basketball team? All 15 guys will say the same thing. Saban Lee, he beat his man, Kyle Alexander, there for one of the top block teams in the country, Tennessee. And he's so good at owning the paint on both ends of the floor. They give you nothing on the defensive end around the rim and they constantly, constantly pound you from the six-foot mark and in. Vanderbilt had a lot of success playing his zone against Kentucky. Kentucky didn't make a lot of shots. So far, Tennessee is two for two as Jordan Bone knocks down a three. Rebels. Vanderbilt, the starting five, Jimmy Dykes. The big story is the idea that Darius Garland got hurt. He played five games, and he announced yesterday he was leaving the program to focus on getting himself and his left knee right for the NBA draft. That's a huge story for Vanderbilt. He was most likely a program-changing point guard that Bryce Drew was going to have for one year, and instead he had him for four games and a few minutes of another one, and they have not recovered offensively since the injury to Garland. Alexander's got two blocks. Tennessee's two of two. They lead it five zip. He goes and gets it, doesn't he? Sure does. He gets out of area rebounds, out of area blocks, out of area loose balls. This Tennessee team is a second and third effort team in so many ways. Schofield, long distance. That one is way off. It's an air ball. He'll hear it here. For the Volunteers, they've won 12 games in a row. Second time they've been number one in school history. 2008, of course, was the last time. Their average margin of victory in SEC games is over 20 points. That's that uh, power dominance that top-ranked teams have the ability to do. They can knock you out in a 9-10-0 run as good as anyone in the country. So we shift to having a phenomenal freshman season. He wears number 11 for Vanderbilt, guarded by Williams, takes him to the rack, and we're going to get a travel call. So a couple of blocks and their first turnover. That's Vanderbilt's offense in the first three minutes for Bryce Drew. And he's kind enough to be wired up for us tonight, so we'll get a chance to see how he coaches this very young team. And I was with him yesterday in practice and today, and I counted, I lost track after 25 times, the times that he talked about, it's our paint, it's our paint tonight. We have to keep it out of there, and we must get it in there on the offensive end. So far, it has not been our paint. It has been Tennessee's paint. Williams misses offensive rebound to Alexander. Ravi, again, how he goes and gets the ball. It, it's a loose ball above the rim. And Kyle Alexander with that long wingspan and quick feet, tremendous. 
Good pass down low. Alexander, easy layup. Nice look from Jordan Bone. The assist to turnover ratio, part of your offensive efficiency. They're amongst the best in the country. Yeah, number number two, I believe, and overall in assist per game, number one in assist to turnover. They feed the post off the bounce better than anyone in college ball. Another turnover. Schofield gets fouled as he was going up for a big dunk. Let's talk about out of area plays that Tennessee time and time again makes, and it's out of area rebounds, out of area loose balls. Look at Kyle Alexander at 6'11". Goes about seven or eight feet to keep the ball alive, and that's what I'm talking about. They bounce pass and feed to the low block to the short corner better than anyone else in the college game right now. Schofield first free throw is good. The challenge for Alexander this season was to be more aggressive. That's what they wanted to see out of him. There's about 33 NBA scouts here tonight. And Alexander may be at the top of the list of the players they're here to see. I, I think you're right, because he is a sprinter speed guy from rim to rim. He can set ball screens at that next level and dive out of them, and he is a phenomenal defensive player. Vanderbilt on the board. Good take by Saban Lee, the sophomore guard out of Phoenix, Arizona. He needs to have a big game. He has go-by speed that you have to have against Tennessee. You know where the go-by speed comes from? Where? His dad, Amp Lee, used to play pretty good. Running back for FSU and, of course, the NFL. There's Williams, and he gets hit down low. He'll go to the free throw line. It's been interesting. We've watched the two coaches early on as Shit 2 picks up his first foul. Rick Barnes really hasn't gotten out of his chair yet. And Bryce Drew has been pacing the sideline. Of course, Vanderbilt and this Memorial Gymnasium, uh, you have the teams on both baselines and obviously this floor is raised which you'll be able to get a look at as you look at the fans uh, in the distance they start with uh let's say a four foot drop off i mean they're standing there and it's up to their waist so the teams are at the baselines the coaches after years of having to be confined to the baseline able to go up and down the sideline you know it's interesting before i was a head coach in this building came in here twice we lost on last second shots by the way both times I wasn't aware of the fact that you have to not overcoach your team because they are literally, Ravi, especially on the offensive end in the second half, right there in front of you. And if you're not careful, Rick Barnes and I talked about that today, you can get into a habit of coaching every pass. Don't want to do it. Wetzel had it. How about the third turnover now for Vanderbilt? Can't start that way against this team from Tennessee. Only two points, and we're four minutes in. Time Schofield touches it, they start the air ball chant. Well, he's an over 40% three point shooter, so I think he's got a pretty good stroke if he has to. That'll get his kid. Jordan Bones outside shooting has improved dramatically. His overall shooting has improved. His three point numbers may be down, but they love when Jordan Bone now has the ball in his hands with this either shooting or passing. Absolutely. He's right at 30% on the year. He's the one of the guys in the starting lineup that Vanderbilt to start the game is not going to go heels to the three point line. They're going to stay shrunk inside. That may change after his first two makes. 13 2. G2 in the corner. Neesmith. That's short. Williams goes up and grabs it. And just what you'd expect from Tennessee in this game. Efficiency. Williams gets it in the paint, spins and fades, and mm. that drops. They're on fire early, up 15 to 2. And it sounds like a home game for the Volunteers. Listen as we go to break. The ball's up 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Zaxby's, chicken fingers, buffalo wings, salads. Find a location at zaxby's.com. Bring your friends, bring your family, and bring on the flavor. Try Zaxby's boneless wings meal tossed in our new Caribbean jerk sauce. Or customize your meal with any of our other nine delicious sauces. Zaxby's. Walking a dog can add thousands of steps to your day. Walking this many, that can be rough on Pam's feet, knees, and lower back. That's why she wears Dr. Scholl's Orthotics. They relieve pain and give her the comfort to move more so she can keep up with all her best friends. Dr. Scholl's, born to move. Well, the kids wanted a puppy, but they can be really expensive. So to save money, I just found them a possum.
Dad, I think he's dead. Probably just playing possum. <laughs> there he is. There's an easier way to save. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. With Expedia, I saved when I added a hotel to our flight. So even when she grows up, she'll never outgrow the memory of our adventure. Unlock savings when you add select hotels to your existing trip. Only with Expedia. Introducing the all-new Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling. A product of mastery. Lease the 2019 ES350 for $399 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Raptors, Rocket, Friday at 8 on ESPN. Presented by State Farm. Fast start, Tennessee. Let's now take a look at how Admiral Schofield puts in a lead effort to win college basketball's highest individual honor in our Wendy's Wooden Watch. The thing that sets me apart from other players is my mindset. It's not about scoring. It's not about, you know, going out and making the highlight plays. For me, it's just about winning. And for me, I go out and affect the game in different ways. It's about rebounding, defending, and leading at a high level. And when my name is called, scoring the ball at a high level. My name is Admiral Schofield. I'm from the University of Tennessee, and that's why I'm Wooden Award worthy. Well, Bryce Drew is very familiar with Admiral Schofield. Bryce told me yesterday that when he was the head coach at Valparaiso, that Admiral Schofield was there for kind of an unofficial visit and offered him a scholarship. And he said uh, about three months later, we went to an AAU tournament to watch him play, and we walked in, we knew we had no shot. He was gone. Because of all the other big schools that were there watching AD. Fulkerson nearly stepped in front, nearly another turnover. And she too battling for it. They got a man wide open underneath, and that'll help. Neesmith for the flush to make it 15 to 4. Well, Vanderbilt struggling, though, to run any type of offensive rhythm in the half court. Lamonte Turner on the floor now. He gets it low to Fulkerson, the cutting Alexander, and he's going to get fouled. So a huge weekend to college basketball. Number nine, Kansas, takes on number eight, Kentucky. That's it, Rupp, in the sixth annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. It's also a Sonic Blockbuster. Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. The Big 12 Challenge, SEC, presented by Continental. As Schofield misses, Alexander has it blocked. Kansas, by the way, has won the last three and six of the last nine against Kentucky under Bill Self. And what a gauntlet Kentucky has managed to go through. Wiped out Mississippi State last night. They got a huge win at Auburn on the road. And if they can go the triumvirate to take care of Kansas, he could be back in the top five. Yeah, I watched that game last night with uh, you and Dick Vitale and Laura. And, and, and to me, Tyler Hero is the impact guy for them going forward. Yeah. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to get for those other guys. Hero, though, is a difference maker. So much more than a jump shooter. Active. You've got a chasing. Kind of gambler defensive like Hagen's right now. They decide to double Alexander, and it leads to a turnover. Bryce has tried to change the game with man-to-man -man defense and got a couple of stops early. And you also see the impact that a guy like Alexander has. Lee had what appeared to be a left-handed layup, and instead, thinking maybe about Alexander, then went for a much more difficult reverse. Yeah, they, he just does so many things, Alexander does. And his speed is really terrific for a 6'11 kid. He's got guard speed. I've watched him run line drills in practice, and he's right there step for step with with Bone, Bowden, Turner. Long, lanky dude that covers a lot of ground. Joe Toy into the game. He wears number two. Another tough shot. And again, that Tennessee interior defense making it real difficult for the Commodores. Williams will shoot the three. That one looked a little long and strong, and it rattles in and out. There's no offense been ran, and we're down to 14 on the shot clock. That pressure, the ball pressure of Tennessee, really pushing out Vanderbilt. They start to play with now seven on the shot clock. Three-pointer. Saban Lee, and all of a sudden now it's back to an eight-point ball game. We'll hear what Bryce Drew had to say to his players in a moment to try to keep their heads up after that 15-2 start. Tennessee got caught in a 1-4 switch, and Williams had to back off with the point guard, Lee, and gave him just enough vision of the room to, dra uh, dra to drain the three at the rim. Turner goes with his left hand. That misses. Good box out. She 
have to. Again, this time, the reverse pays off. The foul on Grant Williams and a chance for a three-point play. Right, this kid's really skilled, Chatou, at 6'10". He's a downhill driving big, which is a hard match sometimes. And you saw his ability to change hands around the rim. One of the question marks I had coming in, could he play through the contact that Tennessee's going to put on him in this ballgame? So far, he's answered yes. Simi shit too, along with Darius Garland, and you got a real feel with Aaron Eastmith why there was so much hope for this Vanderbilt team. Those three freshmen making impacts. The foul there. So Bryce Drew really had what appeared to be a good package. He lost Garland. Now it's on him to make sure these guys stay focused. This game has a long way to go. All right, a long way to go. Pick it, up, it was a good drive, good pass to me. It was good to be there. It was a good drive, good shot, okay? Try to put us in the uh, shoes of Bryce Drew here. In a game like this, let alone the season, just to focus on the game. Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, he knows his guys have lost, what, five in a row. Yep. So their confidence right now within this game is huge, and he's the one guy, the one voice that can kind of give him not fake confidence, but kind of false confidence until they play their way into real confidence. He changed his defense when he called timeout and got Vanderbilt a little bit of momentum in the ballgame. Tennessee's got a 15-9 lead. This basketball's not just uh, get it and shoot it. That's what the players look at just before they hit the floor. We'll explain the black on whiteboard after this. to retire early. Let's talk about this when we meet next week. Edward Jones came to manage a trillion dollars in assets under care by focusing our mind on whatever's on yours. There's a timeout. They're going to ice the kicker. The snap is good. Reds are up. Spending your days playing while still getting a check plan. Let us help with your plan. Yep, every month. Great. Sounds like a plan. Start a plan that flexes with yours. New York Life. Now you pick for $6 at Burger King. Choose either the $6 King box with a flame-grilled Whopper, fries, a drink, and two cookies. Or choose from the two-for-six mix-or-match deal. Make your best pick for six. Only at Burger King. This weekend, you could have conquered that mountain of laundry. But instead, you're conquering this. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's possible in the all-wheel drive Kona, part of the Hyundai SUV family. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. So when I needed legal advice, I just decided to go to law school and handle it myself. Just kidding. I hated school. If you aren't interested in becoming a lawyer yourself, call LegalZoom, and we'll connect you with an actual attorney. 30 minutes before tip, coaches will put a full scouting report on the board and go through it. The personnel is listed, three or four key items on each player. Then you go into the different sets that you're going to be up against tonight, making sure you're familiar with those. Out of bound underplays, side out of bound plays, keys to the game, what does the opposing team do defensively in a nutshell, offensively in a nutshell. Then you go through your plan for the game. What are we going to do to win this game? And you make it very obviously to your players. We do these three things. We're going to win. The last thing, matchups. Who's got two, 35, 5, 2, and 11 Tennessee starters? Very important. Thorough scouting report. Not easy to beat Tennessee, though. No, not easy to beat Tennessee. Not easy to remember anything that is on that whiteboard. Seriously, well, what's the retention by the players when it comes to all that information? Well, the, first of all, the coaches have probably gone through a very similar scouting report like that. That's probably the third time they will have seen it. And an older team like Rick Barnes has on the left, it should be about a 75, 80% retention. And maybe a, a younger team like Kentucky, maybe Cal's not at that level right now. But it took me an interesting, Ravi. I, haven't I have not handwritten a full scouting report on a board in probably 25 years since I was back coaching at uh, Kentucky and Oklahoma State with Eddie Sutton. And when I was a head coach, the assistants do it. It takes time to write that thing down, like 25, 30 minutes. And you go through it in depth. And this is generic stuff. I didn't share any secrets about Tennessee. I kind of just made stuff up just to give 
folks an idea of how thorough teams are these days. And they go through it about 30 minutes before tip and say, this is the last time, any questions? And it's interesting. You don't assign guys that you got Schofield, you got Bone, you got Bowden. You go by numbers right. because you have so many names flying at you during the course of the year. It's always about matchups of numbers. So the coaches from the SEC that just watch that. They don't need to freeze it, take a picture of it, no. and then scour it for any good seat. There's nothing I, there. I wrote the obvious. There's no code there. I, I wrote the obvious stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nothing There's no secrets at all no there. No insights, nothing. No. Huh? No. Nope. Offensive foul called on Toy. Tennessee started on fire 5 of 7, then they quickly went over 3 after these two free throws. Their lead is 17 to 9. Yeah, I think one of those out-of-bounds plays I drew up had six players. So it's a great play if you can pull it off, but get, it's probably not going to be the used. sixth guy on the court. Sometimes it must feel like Tennessee has six guys yes. on the floor. Yes. They have six that can go for 18 or 20 points on you. Schofield, that is an offensive foul. All right, so we heard Bryce Drew once trying to tell his guys that he liked what he saw. Here's huddle number two. We can make another run right here Let's go. and get it closer. Get stops on defense, keep rebounding on offense, keep sharing the ball. Grant Williams picks up his first. Look, the fact that it was 15-2 and now it's 17-9, they have the ball. Th those are important parts of a game if you want to keep that message and give it some credibility. Right, and, and his message is not X is an O driven right now. It's encouraging his guys to hang in this game and, and, and believe the Memorial Magic could kick in for us tonight. Matt Ryan, 32, into the game. And now one-on-one, -on -one, Wetzel and Alexander. Body on body, good move. And he lays it up and lays it in. Yanni Wetzel, 6'10", out of Auckland, New Zealand. That move was so important, the shot fake was so important, because Yanni Wetzel at 6'10", has really short arms. But he got it off because of the freedom that he created with a good footwork. He's a long kid with short arms, and he gets a lot of shots blocked. But watch him right here. He's going to get a really good defender, Alexander, to bite. And once he gets on the high shoulder and leaves his feet, very well done by one in white. Nearly midway through the first half here, Vanderbilt Memorial Gymnasium. Sellout crowd. Hasn't been that way the last couple of years. You bring a number one team from Knoxville down the road here to Nashville. You pack the place. Three-pointer. Bang. Big boost from Matt Ryan off the bench. The junior out of Cortland Manor, New York. Notre Dame transfer. Tennessee switching right now. They're switching ball screens effectively, but they're not switching those pin downs that Vanderbilt throws at you on the weak side. A three would tie this game up after trailing 15 to two. Lee with Williams on him. Blow by. Doesn't get it to go, and the rebound to Alexander. 7-2 run for Vanderbilt as Bone takes it to the big fella. He gets forced to throw it back. Now they move it around with 20 on the shot clock. Schofield, tough shot. Yeah, he's such a hard driver into pull-ups. A little bit of a ghost screen that time by Alexander. Looked like it was going to be an on-ball screen. He just ghosted it, slipped right on through, and Schofield drives it right off the rear of Alexander. Hard, to, hard guard. Fresh bodies coming in for Vanderbilt. Three of them line up in front of us. Jordan Bowden gets set to come in for the balls. And you mean in front of us. They are in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan got hit as he fired up that three, so he will shoot three free throws. I remind everybody, our women's Thursday night showcase, number one Notre Dame, right here in Knoxville to take on the Lady Vols. I should say in Knoxville, 7 p.m. Eastern time, the ESPN, the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Tennessee's really struggling. They've lost, I think, a half dozen in a row. And last year, the Irish had their greatest comeback in school history. They were down 23 points in South Bend. They came back and beat the Lady Vols. Tennessee Lady Vols may be flirting with not being in the NCAA tournament. Hard to think, think about, it. yes. 81% free throw shooter, misses the first of three. Rick Barnes and Terry Oglesby talking things over on the sideline.
Tennessee. Two, two. Smith, Evans, all back into the game. Bowden back in for Tennessee. Bryce Drew has a 1 2 2 press just to kind of choke the game down, slow it down. Chooses not to use it this time. And the zone defense did not work. And Bryce now, his man to man defense has gotten him back in this game. Jordan Bowden pull up in the lane. The best six man in college basketball right now. One of the best guards, period, but certainly the best six man off the bench in terms of 19 points a game in conference play. Going to get an offensive foul. They call that one against Maxell Evans. That'll be his first. Fouls needed to pile up for Vanderbilt. Seven. They did a nice job withstanding that first burst. Down 15 to 2, now back to 21 16. And it doesn't get any easier, obviously, in the SEC. Kentucky next week will be here. Bowden misses the three. Look at Alexander's active on the offensive board. He can't come up with it, and they get a five on four. Maxwell Evans out of Houston, Texas. Ryan had nowhere to go, and he lost it. Then they got a run out to Bowden, and he will lay it in off the window. A little fast break off the turnover. Terrific defense by Tennessee. Uh, Vander went to their elbow series, and Tennessee knows off their elbow series, they like the dribble handoff and the turn of the basketball towards the rim. Tennessee sitting on that white line, just shoot it up. Vanderbilt 0 oh, and 5 in the conference to start. They've been in a bunch of games. Good move on the back door and a good cut. And that one goes in from Aaron Neesmith. Keeps him within five. Neesmith is a real building block for Bryce Dew as a freshman. He's a, he's a muscled up kid with a really good stroke. Kind of a unique part of his game. We'll take a timeout here. Vandy, worst in school history to start SEC play. Oh, what a win over the number one team in the land would do for him. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Here we go. Discover. I like your card, but I'm absolutely not paying an annual fee. Discover has no annual fees. Really? Yeah. We just don't believe in them. Oh, nice. You would not believe how long I've been rehearsing that. No annual fee on any card, only from Discover. Emerge restored, replenished, fortified. Emerge every day with Emergency, packed with B vitamins, electrolytes, antioxidants, plus more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Why not feel this good every day? Emerge and see. Finder tool from AutoZone is a fast source of relief. It tells you what's the most likely fix for your engine light on the spot. For her, a gas cap. For them, new spark plugs. Need a repair shop? We can help with that too. So, how will the AutoZone Fix Finder help you? The rule of three states, things that come in threes are inherently more appealing than those that don't. We couldn't agree more. SUVs, one GMC. Ring in the new year with the new GMC. Get 19% below MSRP on these select models in stock. See your select GMC dealer today. If you're facing a criminal charge, you're up against an army. My goals are to help a person in need and to let them know that there's somebody for them, that it's not hopeless, that there's a way out Regardless how desperate the situation is, there's always solutions to every problem. You know, there's always hope. If you've been charged with a crime, call Rob McKinney now. Sean Fawn of Dallin in the Bristol studio. LSU, the other SEC top 25 team in action against Georgia. Marlon Taylor. Yeah, that was a bad pass. And that was an outstanding finish. That capped off a 14-0 run for the Tigers. LSU's won seven straight back in the top 25. Back to Rabbi and Jimmy. Thank you, boys, very much. Good to hear Farney and Dallin in the studio. Solo, unsupervised, risky. 
Tennessee at 5 and 0. LSU, the schedule suggests they could start out here, what, 6, 7, 8 and 0? Yeah, 8 and 0, if you look at it. And that, but they, they are have a loaded front line. Kentucky playing like one of the top five or six teams in college ball. And how about Chris Silva last night going Woo. for 32 and 14 against Auburn? Yeah, I don't really think South Carolina is going to go away anytime soon, but. Ole Miss got beaten pretty badly on the road last yeah, night by Alabama. Did. Alabama has proven themselves in games even they've lost. I'm not sure that I go with the good loss, but they've been in some really good games that they've ended up losing against really good teams. We'll get an offensive goaltend on Eve Ponds. Yeah, Petty was good again last night off the bench. I mean, I had the game Alabama-Tennessee Saturday. and Tough game for Tennessee. Yes, they put a lot of pressure on Tennessee, especially in that second half. You go back and watch Tennessee's films. Two out of their last three halves of basketball, they have not played great, especially on the defensive end. They have struggled guarding the bounce. The different styles of the SEC. Some deliberate, others like to get up and go. Auburn shoots, you know, 53s a game, it feels like. Other teams do the same. Tennessee's not as proficient or prolific as a three-point shooting team. Neither is Kentucky. Good hands and near steal for Shitu in the back court. But Tennessee maintains control. Bone to the rack, and he can do that as well as anybody in the country. Puts the brakes on and knocks down that jumper. Brakes is very important in basketball. His ability to stop going full speed is so hard to guard. And not a lot of guys have great breaks in college. And his ability to stop and elevate is very impressive. Second three, and that one looked really good. The release from Matt Ryan. He's banged two of those. You can't let Ryan get loose. That's what he does. If he's not making shots, he's not doing anything else for Vanderbilt, and you can't let him see the ball go in. Schofield in and out. Williams on the ground will get a foul on Vanderbilt. This is Wildcat Pride. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But Kansas fears no cats. Lexington is ready for a battle of the Blue Bloods. Number nine, Kansas. Number eight, Kentucky. Saturday at six on ESPN. What a game that's going to be. The way the Wildcats are playing, watching them last night, their bench is getting lengthened. EJ played a terrific game last night. TJ Washington continues to look more and more like a mid to late first round draft pick. And the way the game started last night, Keldon Johnson was on fire, and then he sort of disappeared as far as the points go. Mm -hmm. Hagens was very good, but didn't put up big points. And I know John Calipari and other coaches say, I don't want to hear about number of points. It's not about the individual statistics, it's about the team. And last night, Kentucky looked that way. Yeah, for, here, here's the difference in that ball game for me. Diedrich Lawson for Kansas has to be outstanding on the road for Kansas to win. Okay, Kentucky doesn't have to have one guy. They don't have one guy that you know if he doesn't get his 20, we have no shot. That's that depth that you were just talking to. And I know what Kentucky's ranked right now, but in my eyes, they have grown to one of the top five or six teams in all of college ball. It's amazing. Every coach you speak to, everybody that covers college basketball, especially in this conference, they they kind of marvel at what Calipari does every year. And this year, it's almost a little early. Usually those teams in February look like they're gelling. Here we are still in January, and it really looks like they're coming together at a quicker pace than usual. You can make the argument John Calipari should be in the National Coach of the Year conversation. When, when you consider the beatdown that they took on opening night and where he has taken his team from that point forward. Now, that just didn't happen. They've got talent. They're young guys, but he held that, that thing together and, and figured it out. And, uh, boy, they have just barge their way back into the party in terms of the top 10 teams we have our eyes on. Bring Nick Richards off the bench, played some productive minutes last night. It's interesting. Coach Cal with all those five stars, and you got him as a potential coach of the year. I like it. Well, they're so young, though. Yep. Just think about it. It's how difficult that is, that his ability to stop again and pop. He explodes into his jump shot. He's 6'3", Ravi. But they explode in their jump shot. They're, they're shooting about 58% Tennessee is from the two-point part of the floor as a team. All of them shoot unblockable shots. Jordan Bowen at the double figures. He's got 10 points. They're going to get another offensive foul. And that one is on Shitu. 
Seventh foul for Vanderbilt and the crowd here wearing black and gold. Not happy. And Chateau leads Vanderbilt in field goal attempts. Minutes played. He's a guy that Bryce wants to keep on the floor. Vanderbilt has gotten himself back in this game though by moving that ball side to the side and not trying to attack the first side off the bounce. Williams, such a coach on the floor. He was waiting for Turner to come over and set a screen for him. Now he's got the ball one on one with Wenzel, and he will just elevate and shoot and come up short. Schofield's slow start tonight, and Williams' slow start tonight. Now, if you're a Vandy, get the ball side to side to go back to their elbow series, watch the dribble handoff, and they back cut the dribble handoff, and the second guy gets it. Lee, Good well done. Pass. Yeah. Santa flush. Well, really well done. Really well done. The second guy was a dribble handoff option that time, and after the handoff, the hard rim run. Very difficult play to defend. Saban Lee was the guy that had the assist. Ball on the floor. We got bodies down there. Bowden is able to kick it to Bone, who checks to see his feet are still in bounds. Good energy, good effort from Vanderbilt yes. after being down 15 2. I go back to those wired segments that we've heard from Bryce Drew just continuing to talk his team into hanging this game. How about Lamont oh, Turner? Wow. He can do that. As the shot clock expired, he hits a dagger three. They don't feel shot clock pressure, talking about Tennessee. Another sign of an old, experienced team. Very difficult to get them rattled within the game. The quick off the bounce with that dribble. They got a mismatch down low, and they found the right guy. Good pass as they took advantage of it. Simi Shitu. Tennessee continues to switch right now, one through five, and Shitu did a good job of getting Turner on the high hip. That's a tough shot as Bone was fading away from the basket. Within six, under three and a half to go, first I go, half. I would go back to the elbow series right now. They've got two baskets out of the last four times they've ran it. There's the elbow touch. Nice look. Great fake. Yeah. And one! Crowd feeling it, players are feeling it. It's closest they've been since it was 5 nothing at the 19-11 mark. Keep it going, Vandy. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. There are a chosen few in possession of an X Factor most can only dream of. Capable of bringing a packed building to its feet with a simple wave of their arms. They don't just inspire school spirit, they embody it. Statues are built in their honor. Yep, there's no big man on campus bigger than the one in the big furry suit. I'm Dak. If you're like me, you don't get much downtime, which is why I'm shooting a soup commercial while training. Chunky Soup is packed with hearty meat and veggies, so when I do find time to eat, it is oh so good. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. Doesn't that cloud right there look like a penguin? That looks just like your house. That's being burglarized. They're stealing your TV right there. Oh, and right there, it's a bear destroying your car. You need a vacation. Y you know, Chris, some of us don't have an off season. Right now, Domino's has a large $5.99 carryout special. With a deal this amazing, we're going to need a ton of boxes. This week, carry out large two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each, only at Domino's. Turn up your swagger game with one-a-day gummies. One serving, once a day. With nutrients that support six vital functions and one healthy you. That's the power of one-a-day. This is Wildcat Pride. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But Kansas fears no cats. Lexington is ready for a battle of the blue bloods. Number nine, Kansas. Number eight, Kentucky. Saturday at six on ESPN. 
host. We don't need no stinking hosts. <laughs> Sean Farnham, Dallin Cuff coming your way at eight trade halftime report. SEC, deep dive. We're going to get into that coming up at halftime, but pretty big milestone they hit as a conference this week. Yeah, six teams ranked in the top 25. First time that's happened since January of 2003. So my question to you, Carl Ravitch, is very simple. Do you know the Major League Baseball MVPs for 2003? What do you say, the AL MVP for 2003? Or, or NL, either one. All right, let's think about that. What does that have to do with the top six? <laughs> Is this the first time they've had six of the top 25 since 2003? Oh, I'm, yep. I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to go Barry Bonds on you, Carl Ravitch, and A-Rod. Now the question becomes this. Does Barry Bonds deserve a chance to be in the Hall of Fame? I, you're my baseball expert. I'm going to you. <laughs> well... I don't think Barry Bonds gets into the Hall of Fame until the Hall of Fame voters turn over or they change as far as the uh, makeup of the voter. I don't think that the movement for Bonds or Clemens has been enough that they would uh, eventually get in. The deserve is a different part of that question. There's a lot of people who think his play on the field uh, in what they believe prior to the alleged steroid use would be enough to get him in. Um, I don't have a vote. Unfortunately, if I had a vote, I would vote Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens in the Hall of Fame. American League MVP Mookie Betts rumored to be in the house. We got the 2018 MVP, and he will join Jimmy Dykes in the second half if we can reel him in, J.D. What do you do? You, uh, you switching defense. Turner's going to switch, but you, so you back cut the switch. And that's what Vanderbilt has done a couple of times. And Lamonte Turner was calling out the switch too soon, lost contact with his guy, and Vanderbilt now is lifting their offense. Bryce Drew has kind of stolen some things from actually Kevin Stallings' offense back in the past few, uh, back in the years, and that high lifted offense with those bigs is very difficult to defend, especially if you have a passing big and a shooting big like he has with Ryan. So when we talk with Bryce Drew, I'm going to get a foul here early. When we talked with Bryce Drew earlier, he talked about all the five games that they played, and he literally went down the list of how they were in the games, led the games, had a chance to lead, and then missed a shot, so instead of being tied, they ended up being down five. At what point do you buy into that? And then it, the other question inside of that is at what point do you say you're 0-5? It's a little bit of both. I mean, that's a guy that knows what the record is, but I mean, he's got a young team that completely, the wind was taken out of their sails with a gut punch when sure. Garland went down with a meniscus tear. So he's had to just rebuild his team on the fly, rebuild their confidence, and he's gonna be very pleased with this first half. The score, the pace, he knows he doesn't want to get the game into the 70s, and right now he has this thing choked down with a young team against the number one team in the country. There's the youth. And think about Garland, who played five games with that meniscus injury. He had scoring games of 33, 24, 19. And he is still projected on the mock draft on ESPN to be a top 10 pick. That's how good he is. Tough pass, turnover. Chance for the first lead for Vanderbilt. All the way to the rack, and they get a lead. That's Aaron Neesmith having a good first half. They've kept the black and gold crowd into it. Lamonte Turner high arcing three. Ferries another one. Boy, such a weapon, isn't he? Off the bench. Sixth man of the year last year in this league. Missed a good portion of non-conference play, but has the ability to make dagger threes on the road. Eight quick points. Well, that is a spread open post offense by Vanderbilt lifting that thing high they're getting slips out of it getting some driving angles out of it five on the shot clock fade away Neesmith no good and Schofield will run it down when Turner wants to go Tennessee's a, a running team they want the ball to the elbow within the first four or five seconds of the possession Again, that one is off to the left, and they air a ball, and it'll go out of bounds. Lamonte Turner. All right, take three for Bryce Drew. His team is down two.
full-time coach, full-time cheerleader on the side of this one tonight. And what a job. They were down 15 to 2 if you're just joining us. And now down just two points with a minute to go in the first half. Shit two got away with the walk. And it's a Euro step, and we are tied at 35. His ability to play through contact. Probably the best half at basketball he's had in that area. Contested shot. Good oh, great. man. Jordan, Bone, Bowden, I should say. Their ability to make guarded shots because of their size and their high release point from all of them. Between Shitu, Lee, and I think Matt Ryan really sparked this team back in the first half. Go right back to their elbow series and shoot another layoff off, uh, off of it. Lee Smith lays it in. And a timeout called by Tennessee and Rick Barnes. 30-second break with 21.7 on the clock in the first half. Good one here at Bandy. Icon windshield wipers. The calm in the storm. Well, Vanderbilt on the offensive end, rather, they continue to lift their offense. So what it does when you do throw the ball to the box, it allows you to go one-on-one -on -one with no help defense digging down. But the elbow touch has been critical to Vanderbilt in this first half. They've had dribble handoff action off of it. They've got the backdoor cut from the corner to the rim off that elbow touch. And it's been now eight possessions of in a row of elbow series from Bryce Drew. He has found something that's working against Tennessee's defense. Spreading Tennessee out, moving their bigs away from the rim, letting their elbow guy be the passer and the playmaker in the half-court offense. Where's your last shot coming on this team? The last shot right now for, for, for Tennessee? You got, you got well, That's the great thing about Tennessee, you got a lot of weapons. Schofield in a ball screen is always a good option. Kyle Alexander with a bone, with a bone sprint as well. Shot over the rim. Shot over backboard. the backboard. And he does it with about five seconds left. Vandy will have a chance here to grab the lead going into the half. A critical mistake by an experienced point guard going way too early. Neesmith, and that's going to be a carry. They'll give it back to Tennessee with three seconds on the clock. <laughs> now, now a young mistake by Neesmith trying to dribble in traffic. have to know if you're Vanderbilt right now with three seconds to go and a side out of bounds on the other side of half court what the tendencies are Schofield coming to the ball is one tendency Kyle Alexander or bone getting it on the move there he goes he'll stop and pop Bowden that did not get off in time what a half for Vanderbilt they were down 13 at one point 15 to 2 but they end the half on a 13 6 run they trail by just one Good job by Bryce Drew to keep his team involved. 2003 MVPs, Bonds and Alex Rodriguez. Interesting questions. Our MVPs in the studio tonight, Cuff, Farnham. Welcome into the E-Trade Halftime Report. As Ravi said, Cuff and Farnham here. Another SEC Top 25 team in action, LSU, at home against Georgia. They were down early, Farnham, and Tremont Waters gets out in transition. Yeah, this team is just superior athletically in meeting LSU and trailing early. They went on a 14-0 run after trailing 13-8. Waters has got to be the key. He was trying too hard early. Now he's just making plays happen. And dropping this dime. Not Woo! a dime. That was not a great pass. Great finish by Marlon Taylor. And LSU is up by 12. Georgia offensively limited, struggling a bit. As we mentioned, Farney and Cuff in here for the E-Train Halftime Report. Let's get to this game right now. Vanderbilt battered back in this thing. Tennessee, though, early on, what were you seeing out of them? Well, what I loved is they were trying to establish Grant Williams early. And you know it on the scouting report of exactly what Grant Williams is going to do. He was the reigning SEC Conference Player of the Year. So as we take a look at the first possession of the game, here we play this thing out. The first thing you got to look for is where is he? Well, his shoulders are parallel to baseline. Look how low he is. They're all pushed up defensively, which you think, okay, that's fine until that happens right there. The ability to get one 
two feet in the paint. Once that happens, he's got a clear angle to the rim. You're going to struggle to stop him. There's nothing you can do. An outstanding job by Grant Williams early in this game. He's got eight points. These are these only two makes, though, that he had in the first half. So if I'm Tennessee, I'm talking about trying to get him involved a little bit more. Now he's going to set the screen, and he's going to go right to this logo. When he gets to that logo area, again, in the middle of the zone defense, there's nothing you can do because you have to play him to also be a facilitator of the offense as well. I think they need to do a much better job of getting him reestablished here in the second half. But, Dallin, the question I have for you is how do they fix what they're doing at the defensive end of the floor right now? That's the problem right now. Vanderbilt's getting anywhere they want on the floor. 22 points in the paint. Down 15-2. to two. This yeah. team's lost five straight games. Toughness, mental toughness for a very young team to bounce back. It's been impressive so far. Can they come out of the second half the same way? Now, we come back on the E-Trade Halftime Report. We dive a little deeper in the SEC, which hit a little milestone this week. This Halftime Report is presented by E-Trade, the original place to invest online. Just got a job as a lifeguard in Savannah. Dave & Buster's has unlimited video game play and unlimited wings for just $19.99 every Thursday. All you can eat and all you can play for $19.99 every Thursday for a limited time. Only at Dave & Buster's. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. And you got cut rate car insurance? Paying for this could feel like getting robbed twice. So get all state. And be better protected from mayhem. Like me. <laughs> get great deals on great gear at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's Cabin Fever Sale. Like savings of 25% on XPS and Cabela's Tackle Bags. And save $20 on this Bass Pro 10 bearing spinning combo. Your adventure starts here. Incomparable design makes it beautiful. State-of-the-art technology makes it brilliant. The visionary Lexus NX. Lease the 2019 NX300 for $339 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. If a dirty CPAP is making you sick, you're not alone. I was getting sinus infections because I wasn't cleaning my CPAP properly, and that continued until I got my SoClean. SoClean is the world's first automated CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. It kills 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria that can build up in your mask, hose, and reservoir. I don't have to push a button or anything. I just put the mask in the chamber, close the lid, and it runs automatically. SoClean has, has been a lifesaver. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks. Try it risk-free for 30 days. Even shipping is free. Call 1-800-436-4916 to take advantage of this limited time offer. I would recommend the SoClean machine to anyone else. It is that good of a machine. It has made that big a difference in my life. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. Even shipping is free. Call 1-800-436-4916 or go to SoClean.com. Welcome back to the E-Trade Halftime Report. Are you ready for the SEC Big 12 Challenge? 20 teams, 10 games, one day. Because you don't argue which conference is best, you settle it on the court. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes, it was settled on the court last year. 6-4 SEC taking down the Big 12. Forney and I matriculated over here to the comfy couches. Uh, the SEC is a conference you've covered for yep. years. And a couple years ago, they had three teams in the tournament. Now we have, or you could argue, three teams that can win the national championship. How have we gotten to this point? Well, I think it really starts with coaches, right? So they had made great hires. That brings in talent. But it also starts the league office. Greg Sankey, Dan Leibovitz, they've done a great job of making it a point of emphasis to get basketball right and no proof better than that than having the number one team in the country not be Kentucky actually but be Tennessee. Yeah Tennessee the class of the league. It's weird to say that but that's what they were last year. They are that again 
it's because these guys have gotten better year over year. They're senior late, and they've not been arrested in their development. Grant Ooh. Williams, senior, but the SEC, excuse me, the SEC, champ, uh, SEC player of the year last year has gotten better. He facilitates out of the post and out of the high post. Admiral Schofield, a guy that can get you buckets. Balanced scoring, though, Farney. Five guys averaging double digits on this team. They can do it from all different angles. Now, I've got a nitpick. One little thing they got to work on. They're a good defensive team. Can't foul, though. Their defensive free throw rate is a little bit high. Got to defend without fouling. Look, you got to search hard to find a weakness in Tennessee. I get it. I get it. Uh, do not have to search all that hard to find a strength for Kentucky. They're out in transition, and they have been outstanding in the open floor. In particular, Ashton Haggins has turned it on with the number of steals. The one concern I have is the consistency in defending the three-point line. They are last in the SEC, allowing opponents to knock down 36% from beyond the arc. They've got to clean that up. Now, they were pretty good the weekend. They did it pretty well, pretty well against Auburn to keep them off the three-point line and win that game. But Auburn, a team that has been thriving off of turnovers. They're first in the nation in turnover rate, and they can play at an electric pace. They can get up and down and score off those turnovers, and they got guys like Bryce Brown and Jared Harper that just get in you for 94 feet and can make shots. The problem, though, right now, Austin Wiley's been injured. And against Kentucky, they got dominated the interior. And the other night against uh, South Carolina, Chris Silva, 32 and 14. They are weak in the interior right now, and that is a big problem. Well, take a look at LSU. Here's a big problem for any opponent of theirs trying to match their athleticism. They've got length. They've got superior athleticism all over the floor. It's a big reason why Will Wade's team has figured it out. They had the number five recruiting class in the country. Now they're actually playing like a group and gelling like you hope to see. One of the concerns I have, though, is they often ball watch defensively, allow players to move without the defense knowing exactly where they're supposed to be, and thus they give up some easy buckets. And in tight games and conference play, they got to clean that up. Maturation has been interesting. I saw them at the Advocate Invitational in November. They were a bunch of individuals, now much more a team. Coming up, more E-Trade Halftime Report. But our game right now, Vanderbilt is down 15-2. to two. Andrew Neesmith has led them back. Game high 11 right now. Commodore's trail by one. They didn't think they'd get this far. Or meet them. Or him. Or realize just how fun a road trip could be. They discovered a new favorite food, a new favorite view, and made some new favorite memories. Book your flights, hotel, and car on Expedia and travel like a champion. Expedia. Doesn't that cloud right there look like a penguin? Really? That looks exactly like a busted pipe spewing water everywhere. Can you just stop being an insurance agent for like two seconds? It's my job to think about these things. Well, what does that cloud look like? That looks just like your house. That's being burglarized. They're stealing your TV right there. Oh, and right there, it's a bear destroying your car. You need a vacation soon, very soon. You, you know, Chris, some of us don't have an off season. You could take the treatment of your ulcerative colitis in a different direction. Talk to your doctor about Zeljans, a pill, not an injection or infusion, for adults with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. Zeljans is the first and only FDA-approved pill for moderate to severe UC. It can reduce symptoms in as early as two weeks, improve the appearance of the intestinal lining, and provide lasting steroid-free remission. Zeljans can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, low blood cell counts, higher liver tests, and cholesterol levels. Don't start Zeljans if you have an infection. Your doctor should perform blood tests before and while taking Zeljans and monitor certain liver tests. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common and if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. You could take your UC treatment in a different direction. Ask your gastroenterologist about Zeljans. The unmistakable Cadillac XT4. Once again, driving is joyful. Starting under $36,000. This halftime report is presented by E-Trade, the original place to invest online. Texas at TCU. Longhorns and Shaka Smart looking to get above 500 in Big 12 play. 3-3 three three right now. 
And Jackson Hayes, big time athlete, could be a top 20 pick. Gets the block, the put back by Kevin Samuel. Yeah, and at the moment, it looked like Texas was kind of in control of this game, doing some good job. Pass, kick out, Roach for three. That put Texas up by four. Quant Roy was out last game with an illness. TCU needs every piece they can get without Jalen Fisher. Barry's a dunk right here. Off Anybody want to box him out? Nobody. They're up by four, 19 turnovers this game. It's been a sloppy one. Big game, though, for both teams in the Big 12. That's it for the E-Trade Halftime Report. Second half coming your way. Jordan Bones got him up one. I can deduct this, right? Excuse me, you stuck? No, I'm not stuck. Let's say you were. H&R Block Online has experts standing by. So I can chat with them? Yeah, but you're not stuck. But if I was? They can even see your screen to help you. This screen? Mm -hmm. They can even review your entire online return. How? That's amazing. High five. Like, uh, I don't think that's going to work. Expert help when you need it with H&R Block Online. In person or online, Block has your back. Wow. What a nice place. My experience with USA Air has been excellent. They really appreciate the military family, and it really shows. With all that USA offers, why go with anybody else? We know their rates are good. We know that they're always going to take care of us. It was an instant savings, and I should have changed a long time ago. It was funny because when we would call another insurance company, they would say, oh, we can't be USAA. We're the Weber family. We're the Tennies. We're the Hales, and we're USAA members for life. Get your USAA auto insurance quote today. The Fix Finder tool from AutoZone is a fast source of relief. It tells you what's the most likely fix for your engine light on the spot. For her, a gas cap. For them, new spark plugs. Need a repair shop? We can help with that too. So, how will the AutoZone Fix Finder help you? Houston Clinic Orthopedics, world-class care in Middle Tennessee for more than 20 years. Proven treatments tailored to your specific pain. Leading edge technology from regenerative stem cells to robotic assisted knee surgery. Houston Clinic Orthopedics has changed my life. My quality of life's better. I have no more pain. It is just terrific to live again. When experience matters, Houston Clinic Orthopedics with nine locations to heal you. Back in Smashville after the All-Star break on Saturday, February 2nd, when the Predators look for revenge against Central Division rival the Dallas Stars. Then see them take on the Arizona Coyotes on Tuesday, February 5th, before another tilt with those same stars on Thursday, February 7th. Puck drops at 7 p.m. for all three games. Tickets are still available, so get yours now at NashvillePredators.com or call 615-770-7800. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. We are at Memorial Gymnasium, the campus of Vanderbilt University. And what a game we have, a one-point game, 38-37. Alongside Jimmy Dykes, I'm Carl Ravitch. This is a team, Tennessee, that uh, is basically the best in the conference and one of the best in the country when it comes to field goal percentage defense. They don't allow teams to shoot a high percentage. They were down 15 to Vanderbilt. They shoot 56% get themselves right back in it. I think Bryce has done an unbelievable job in the first half to, to continue to feed his guys confidence. And what has it done? It's allowed them to knock down shots and get out and get going on offense. They've moved the ball really well, Vanderbilt has. They have eight assists on 14 makes. And remember in the first half, Rev, we talked about Bryce Drew saying, it's our paint tonight, it's our paint. Well, so far, it's plus eight points for Vanderbilt in the paint. Expect Tennessee to come out in the second half and try to reestablish that part of the floor. All right, back to the Action on the floor, and Vanderbilt will be going left to right on our screen. Tennessee, the new number one in college basketball. Last time they were number one was 08, their first game after Bruce Pearl's team was anointed the number one spot. They lost a game to Vanderbilt. Will history repeat itself here 11 years later? 
Shit to all the way to the rack, and he missed a layup. And we're going to get a foul underneath. He's frustrated. And that'll be Vanderbilt's foul. Number one, half number two. The Rabbit again, another offensive play to start the second half by Vanderbilt off of an elbow touch. Chatou spun, got to his left paw, got all the way to the rim, just missed it. And Tennessee's going to have to make some type of change or an adjustment on that elbow offense that Vanderbilt has really cut them up with in that first half. Looks like Admiral Schofield may have gotten hit somewhere in the eyes, nose. Popped across the nose right there at the end of the play. At elbow by Yanni Wetzel. Wide open Alexander. Easy layup as he was left wide open on the double of Williams. Grant Williams passes right through double teams. Not so much over the top. Those big shoulders create space and he throws right through hard tight double teams. wanted to shoot that before he had control of it and then he goes baseline met at the rim no foul called Bryce Drew's got his hands up wondering why not Eve Pons three-pointer baseline in and out Bryce Drew working both Terry Oglesby and Terry Weimer Jump shot, no good. Cold start for Vandy. Get Pons hustle down. And a turnover. And shift to one on one. A little ragged here to start the second half. Trapped underneath and a heads up play as Lee throws it off Kyle Alexander. Watch Grant Williams throw through the double team because it's a pretty hard, tight double team with conviction. Shatu doesn't come, come over quite tight enough. And if you don't come with conviction in your double team on Williams, you will get dunked on at the rim because he averages four assists a ball game. Matthew Moyer out and Matt Ryan in. Ryan has the ball now. He was two of two from three point land in the first half. Access denied. Big block. Another one from Kyle Alexander. Boy, he reads it well, doesn't he? He sees the play ahead like a point guard on offense. Watch him come. That's a that's an out of area block of the ball from about eight feet away. You're gonna start shooting down that low. It's a pretty good chance he's gonna yes. block it. <laughs> a turnover on nearly a five second call and a big mistake again for Vanderbilt. Good pass, Alexander with a flush. How about the patience of Jordan Bone? And a quick timeout from Bryce Drew. Tennessee knows who they are, Ravi. And to start the second half, I guarantee it in that locker room at halftime, Rick Barnes said, who are we? Coach, we are a pound the paint, own the paint team. And to start this second half, that's exactly what they've done. Mistake off the inbounds, and it led to Bone and his patience. He thought about a shot, then he waited for the big fella to get open down low for the dunk. Good start to the second half for the number one team in the country. need more space. Is your mom in there? Since Nana's moved in plan. Nope. Let us help with your plan. Yeah, we can do that. Well, that sounds like a plan. Start a plan that flexes with yours. New York life. I'm Dak. If you're like me, you don't get much downtime, which is why I'm shooting a soup commercial while training. Chunky soup is packed with hearty meat and veggies. So when I do find time to eat, it is oh so good. Campbell's Chunky, <clears throat> soup that eats like a meal. There are a chosen few in possession of an X Factor most can only dream of. Capable of bringing a packed building to its feet with a simple wave of their arms. They don't just inspire school spirit, they embody it. Statues are built in their honor. Yep, there's no big man on campus bigger than the one in the big furry suit.
SEC Big 12 Challenge, 20 teams, 10 games, one day. Because you don't argue which conference is best, you settle it on the court. Oh, my. Should be another great matchup this Saturday, the sixth annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. It's presented by Continental. Ten matchups on the day. Nine hours of coverage starting with College Game Day, covered by State Firm at 11 a.m. on ESPN. They will be at Rupp Arena. That's the headliner, the Blue Bloods, as Kansas takes on Kentucky, 6 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Last year, the SEC of Victor 6-4 in that matchup. Best defensive team I've seen the last couple of weeks, Kansas State. They are healthy, and they are a serious challenge, I think, to Kansas in that Big 12. They had a huge win last night against Texas Tech. Boy, Matt Ryan continues to be hot from the outside. They give him two on that one. And Ryan shooting hot. He's three for three in the game. Well, bunny from Grant Williams. He's now in the double digits with ten. More the deep post up, huh? Out of transition by Grant Williams. Runs right in front of the rim. Spreads out low and loaded. And it is over at that point. Pons, a terrific on-ball defender, number 35. Maybe the most athletic player on this Tennessee team. He took an elbow from Neesmith right in front of the official. Didn't get called. Two had a chance. He laid it up, came up short. Then he picks up the frustration foul. Ravi, how do you guard this? Talking about Grant Williams. When he sticks his head below the rim, all he's waiting for is, what's my defender now going to do? And then he quickly steps in front and seals you off and spreads out. He's a very wide post player, and he understands the low man wins on that box, and two in orange at that part of the floor is a handful. Mm. How's Grant Williams, in your opinion, project at the next level? A winner? I, I think he's a, uh, he's a winning player on a winning team that embraces the same type of culture that he's been brought up in under Rick Barnes with a work ethic. He's not going to be an NBA superstar. He's not going to be an NBA all-star, but he's a winning player on a team with a couple of all-star type guys. And he will embrace that role and do it for about 10 or 12 years. Rare miss for Jordan Bone. Shit to another one of those Euro steps and he had no chance. Into too much traffic. No foul called, another block. But you're right, he has, and that shot's got no chance. Not against Tennessee. There's too much contact, too much length, too much aggressiveness to try to have a power drive with a finesse finish. And that young kid's gotta learn if he has any aspirations of moving on to the NBA, how to get grown man finishes in traffic through contact. He'll learn. He's got a lot of skills. John Fulkerson comes into the game. Grant Williams comes out for a few minutes. Alexander reach in and foul they had the they, they covered up the, the curl and the dribble handoff and then Kyle Alexander gets switched on a guard and reaches in and his main responsibility is just to get down and get low and kind of level off that guard feather him off across that free throw line he reaches in and makes the mistake first foul of the game on Kyle Alexander Saban Lee picked up his dribble now he gets it back on the handoff he got bumped we're gonna get foul on the floor Call that on Jordan Bowden with a hold. Ravi Tennessee getting a little bit more aggressive now on denying that elbow touch up top. Rick Barnes trying to push that touch out a little bit higher. Something I'm sure they talked about at the second half of what can we do with this action and pressuring that that catch spot. Very important. Why? Why let him get open, huh? He's been so great, but he missed that one. Foul on Vanderbilt. They had the play set up. They've struggled getting the ball inbounds, but they had that play set up. And Matt Ryan misses his first three. Neesmith picks up his first foul. In the SEC Big 12 Challenge, Tennessee will get West Virginia. They've been without Sag Conate for a while, and there's some frustration down there in West Virginia as to when he gets back on the floor. They need him. Yes, he's a best rim protector in college ball to start the season. Schofield's going to get fouled. He'll go to the free throw line, and he'll shoot a couple. 
power guard that Rick Barnes gets him in the slot just off that 45-degree uh, angle and gets num big number five going downhill. He and Grant Williams are such terrific leaders. We watched Grant Williams today at the shoot-around. He's on the bench right now. When the shoot-around was done, Grant Williams went and stood in front of the ball rack, and he waited for all the balls to be thrown to him, and he put them on the rack. That's something that the managers do or, 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 or maybe the, the, the student trainer does. Grant Williams went and said, throw me all the balls, and let's get them on here. It's just the culture that they have. And yeah. I asked Grant, I said, how'd you get that assignment? He said, it's just, it's, it's who we are, and he walked off. That's, that's huge. You win with guys like that, correct? Yeah, most of the teams that win, when your best player is your hardest worker or willing to do those things, yes. no matter the sport, you tend to have great success on the field and leadership off of it, so for sure. Yes. You... And he's sort of one of the most interesting men, if you use that line, in college basketball. He's a, he's a grown man. You know what, Ravi? You, you, guys who miss the line on running drills, you lose with them. Guys who will not look coaches in the eye, you lose with them. Guys who wear headphones all the time and don't talk to other people, you lose with them. Tennessee has <laughs> none of those type none of guys. Those. That's why they win. We'll return to Fandy. Looking to see if Mookie Betts, the MVP, will join us. Number nine, Kansas. Number eight, Kentucky. Saturday at six on ESPN. It was supposed to be a weekend of serious binge watching. But memories aren't made by staying in. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's possible in the award winning Tucson, part of the Hyundai SUV family. There's a timeout. They're going to ice the kicker. The snap is good. Reds are up. Wait. I didn't know you played for the Bucks. Wow. Don't worry, I can help with this. I'm Dak. If you're like me, you don't get much downtime, which is why I'm shooting a soup commercial while training. Chunky soup is packed with hearty meat and veggies, so when I do find time to eat, it is oh so good. Campbell's Chunky. Soup that eats like a meal. What do people think about the new Big King XL from Burger King? I think it's similar to the Big Mac. I liked the flame grill taste. Big King XL is like a Big Mac, but more large and in charge. I would eat this again. With flame grilled beef, a copy never tasted this good. The new Big King XL, only at Burger King. Hi, Tom. How's the college visit? Does it make a short list? Yeah, I'm afraid so. It's OK. This is what we've been planning for. Knowing what's important to you is why 7 million investors work with Edward Jones. This ladder is special. This first step, it's not even here. It's in the gym where the first practice was held. Climbing it takes months of twists and turns and tournaments. At its peak, you won't be five feet off the floor. You'll be on top of the world, holding the, holding the best trophy in all the sports. A piece of nylon. Continental Tire, for what you do. All right, let's have the confetti. Time out on the floor here. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 45-39. It was a one-point game at the half. As we went to break, whistle sounded. Double technical. Watch the upper part of your screen. Schofield and Ryan, 5-32, and 32, get into it, and they start arguing back and forth. And you can see right there the official it was Terry Oglesby called the double technical on four players. Well, there's no back down in Schofield, we know that, and you certainly can't back down against Tennessee if you have any chance of pulling it off, but you don't want to cross the line with your passion and your urgency in how you're playing. Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravitch here, 45, 39, 15, 50 to go in the second half. Number one team in the country being pushed by Vandy, 0-5 in the conference. I like the explosiveness of Lee. He pulls up there and buries a three. He's made Tennessee pay three or four times in this game when they started switching one through five. Got to back off of him, give him space. Jumping up and knocking down shots. Into the game and making his first impact, Derek Walker, big body. He comes in as a sophomore at 6'8", 236 out of Kansas City. Again, Tennessee so good at bounce passing off of the bounce to feed the post. 
See how they're starting to push that elbow series up a little higher now. Tennessee is on that initial touch. A little handoff. There's some body action, and we'll get a foul. Remind everybody, Sports Center follows the Nuggets and Jazz. And after the buzzer with Stan and Neil, the Rockets, Nick highlights. How about James Harden looking to make it 21 straight 30 point games? Wrap your head around that. Raptors' tough week continues there in Indiana. Look at the game here. The new number one Tennessee Volunteers trying to avenge their first ever game as the number one team, which they lost to Vanderbilt back in 08. Sports Center tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern Time, ESPN and the ESPN app. 21 straight 30 point games. Yeah against the best that we have in basketball. His, 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 his jab series, he gets you leaning one way, comes back the other. It's tremendous to watch what Harden's doing right now in that league. I haven't figured out how his shot doesn't get contested or blocked more often. It doesn't, doesn't, no, you're right. I haven't figured it out because he does his step back. I understand how he creates space, but nobody ever blocks his shot. No. Rocket story tonight on SportsCenter after the NBA. Frustration, you can see it on the face of Grant Williams, who picks up his second foul. And, and the Falls fans in here get a look at the replay on the big screen, and they express their displeasure. Toy, the dump off, we're going to get a block on the floor on Fulkerson. Fulkerson was outside the restricted area. I just don't think he ever got his body squared up and set as a defender. Bryce Drew, it's almost like an outfielder in Major League Baseball. He's got his little sheet, his little notepad in his hand there. You can see it in his left hand. He just called out a play. You see that on outfielders in Major League Baseball when a batter comes up, where they're going to position themselves. We have one of the great outfielders in Major League Baseball, the American League MVP, Mookie Betts, who's going to join us after the next timeout. The Nashville native enjoying the game here tonight. Wanted them to take that initial corner three. Instead, he created a more difficult shot. And the rebound put back up and in. Three-point game. Chatou has held up well in a high-contact game. He's going blow for blow, and he's done a nice job of moving while the ball's in the air. Ooh, Grant Williams baseline, and he flushes it. Ravi, when he leans back, he leans back and gets his body on your body to feel you, and then he, the, the quick spinoff, about as good as we have in the college game at that particular move. Bryce Drew said you'd be able to see Simi Chateau play more tough tonight. And how quickly you're going to learn in the SEC that that's the way it's going to be night in and night out. Yeah. Five on the shot clock. Lee goes reverse. Now the kick three. Got it! Beating the buzzer. Good pass. And Joe Toy knocks it down. The speed of Saban Lee is a problem. Yeah. He got all the way to the rim with a hammer pass. A nice job by Vanderbilt to fill that backside three corner. Tennessee seldom settles for a jump shot in this part of the game. Big body Williams, he'll get fouled. Remember I talked about Grant Williams, his ability to spin off of you, and when he catches this ball, he's just going to lean back just right there, and when he feels you, the quickness in his spin is terrific. And there's that hammer pass by Lee to drive it for others. And a good job of spotting up by Toy. Saban Lee driving the ball with speed. Bryce Drew has to be pleased with that. The elbow series is working for him right now on the offensive end, keeping game pressure on Tennessee, and that's all he wanted. He told you and I earlier, with four minutes to go, can we have game pressure on the balls? It's tracking there right now. Sure is. Simi Shitu has to go to the bench. He's got four fouls. That's a big story in this game, the way he has played, providing them with some offensive rebounds and eight points. So he goes to the bench, four fouls. Keep an eye on the score now 51 47 when he goes out also back into the game for Tennessee Admiral Schofield How about Admiral Schofield we've seen games like this where he struggles or Williams struggles and they both do he's only one of five yeah. on the floor it's a team Tennessee shooting 71 percent in the second half and they can't shake Vanderbilt 
Aliyuk deflected frustration for Drew, but it stays with the Commodores. It is so hard to throw the lob over Kyle Alexander. Like a missing defense system. That ball goes up, yes. he goes up with it. <laughs> See, Tennessee played this zone you know, four or five possessions a game. Tough shot for Toy. He's feeling it, though, at three and now at two. Back within two, Vanderbilt. The ability to stop on the move. We've seen it now two or three times in this game into an elevated jump shot. Gosh, that big keister is hard to defend, isn't it? And they are really trying hard to make sure, as you said, the big keister gets the ball quite a bit. Yeah, he's uh, that. That's we talked about Tennessee in the open, and one of their check marks is they're an experienced ball club. We've seen them on the ropes a little bit at Florida a couple of weeks ago. Alabama made a run at him in the second half. And when those runs start coming from the other team, what does Tennessee do? They go back to who they are and a heavy dose of touches for number two in orange around that box. You're starting to see the impact, too, of the size. Why it's a close game when you don't have a lot of depth, you don't have some of your best players who are gone for the rest of their careers, and you now have two of your better players, each with four fouls. Wetzel will join Shitsu on the bench. That's a big part of this game with 12 22 to go. Absolutely it is. And just you and I put set in court side. Actually our head on the court level. You can just see the difference in bodies right now between Tennessee and Vanderbilt. See if they keep trying to feed Joe Toy the lone senior on this team from Vanderbilt. It's a high 2-3 lifted zone. Look how high Grant Williams will come up out of 1-4 position. Schofield on the other. Set up a corner three. Neesmith, he gets it to go, and if you're making shots, you can stay in it. Just a one-point game. You got Schofield lifted from that from that corner position down low, and well, they did the right thing of finding the hot corner for a right-handed shooter. Anybody stop and shoot quicker and more effectively than Jordan Bone? How good are they at the curl action, wrapping screens from that stepped-off side ball screen action? And off ball curl. Man, are they good at it. Drive and a kick and a trap. Maybe a walk, but a three. Neesmith necessary. How about a tie game with 11 14 to go? Foul on a reach around. Unnecessary foul as Bone was going into traffic. Ravi, I'm not sure. Three hours ago when Vanderbilt's kids walked in this gym, they really believed they could win. I go back to what Bryce Drew, we heard in the Wired in the first half, believe, stay in the game. It's a long game. The offense has been really good. There's there, a lot of pressure right now on Tennessee in this building. All right, Mookie Betts joins us, speaking of champions, when we come back. Come along, catch a half a lump. Sit with me on a ruddy clump. We'll sing a song of days gone by. Come, 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 come along now. Run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. We'll dance and sing till sundown and feast with abandon. We'll sleep when the morning comes and we'll rise by the sound of the bird song. Next time your crew gets together, try Zaxby's Boneless Wings Meal with Caribbean Jerk Sauce. Customize your flavor with any of our nine delicious sauces or try our new Caribbean Jerk Sauce featuring fruity mango, spicy habanero, and jerk spices. Zaxby's. Emerge restored. Replenished. Fortified. Emerge every day with Emergency. Packed with B vitamins, electrolytes, antioxidants, plus more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Why not feel this good every day? Emerge and see. There's nothing quite as magical as staying at a Disney Resort Hotel. So imagine complimentary rides to and from the park, even extra time with your family in the park. And now you can save up to 30% on rooms at select Walt Disney World Resort Hotels. So if you're not staying here, just think what you might be missing. Mom and Dad got a new car. 
It's not theirs, it's mine. The RX 350L with three rows for up to seven passengers. Lease the 2019 RX 350 for $449 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Yeah, I mean, it's etiquette, you know, right. bowling etiquette, you can't... Right. Uh-oh, there you go. I, I ain't getting this voice. <laughs> Get on your horse. <laughs> Don't miss the cutoff. <laughs> Start of a magical year, our friend Mookie Betts during spring training. I ain't getting that one, boys, and now he joins us here. Great to see you. Yes, sir. Thanks How for you doing, me. man? Welcome. This is your house, huh? I mean, you're a Nashville guy. Yeah, Nashville guy. This isn't my house, though. So my house is going to be Tennessee. Just... You went, you committed to go to Tennessee, didn't you? Yeah, I actually uh, signed to go there. You did? Yeah. But things worked out all right. Things ended up working out. Things ended up working yeah, out. Ended up working out. So. How are things going over the winter as a World Series champion? What has uh, Mookie Betts been up to? Nonstop. A lot of traveling. I'm just trying to take it all in. Um, you know, I had a little girl, so that's, congratulations. Uh, thank you. That's Good that's a whirlwind in itself. So, uh, you know, whatever. Speaking of how things worked out for you, I heard earlier today. Wh what's your middle name? Lynn. So your initials are MLB. Yeah, my no, mom says she worked out for you. MLB. Uh, yeah, she, my mom <laughs> says she did it on purpose. I don't believe it, but you know, <laughs> irony is is, uh, is a real thing. <laughs> well, we be honest with you and you know sports as well as anybody that you can go into a game and think maybe it's going to go one way and all of a sudden you're here watching what would have been your team Tennessee and a winless in conference Vanderbilt team 55 all you've been here the whole first half yeah I've been, so I've what, been what's your take on this game I mean it's it's Vanderbilt's hanging around I mean they're they're you know they're one two possessions away and then you knock now they knock down a couple threes in the last couple possessions and Tennessee just uh Hasn't put them away. You know, it's, it's tough to come in here and play. You know, I've seen uh, teams come in here and kind of uh, not play well. And right. Obviously, uh, you know, it's, a great, uh, it's a great atmosphere here. We're seeing it again now. There's a turnover, the drive, the grab by Bone. We're going to get a foul on the floor. Now, I know you as a terrific athlete, obviously an MVP baseball. You're a bowler who bowls how many multiple 300 games? I don't, I don't know. Jimmy, like, like double knows. digit 300 <laughs> bowling games. <laughs> And a basketball player through high school, was there ever a time where you thought about this sport versus another one? I still do. You, you know, still I, do? Yeah, I, I love basketball, so I try and uh, watch it. Um, I got a bunch of friends that play, so put up some shots every now and then. But, um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, basketball is definitely something I, I enjoy. Point guard, shooting guard? Point guard. I, I was going to try and play at Tennessee. I signed there. You were going to be Kenny Lofton. You were going to um, do both. Try and do both, you know. Right. And, uh, and uh, let, let the rest take care of itself, but I did get a chance to. You talked about atmospheres and, and how, how tough it is right now in this building for Tennessee. What a tough atmosphere in major leagues right now. When you go into another <laughs> team's park, w which one's tough on you? Ooh. I mean, <laughs> you got to think uh, New York, obviously, Yankees, is, yeah. is, is uh, a tough atmosphere. St. Louis is a tough atmosphere. I mean, I, I can't even think of all the, all the ones that I mean, you're not going to, really anywhere, you're not going to go anywhere and, and just... Uh, Think you're gonna get a win. When you're the World Series champion, they all get tough. Yeah, they all get they all get tough. So that's, that's what makes got it a fun. Lead here. 56, oh, 55. is this the first lead? This first lead of the game? We've had two ties, three lead changes. That one's just short. Bowden comes down with it, down on the floor. Goes Admiral Schofield. Major League Baseball is interesting. It used to be a land of the Giants. There's great shots with <laughs> Altuve sitting next to Aaron Judge. You're standing next to him. You're not a giant yourself, and yet you're the MVP. When you look at the size of the guys that are out on this floor right now, is it bigger than when you were playing high school ball? Are oh, they yeah. better athletes? Yeah. When I was a, when I was in high school, our center was six four. Is that right? All right so now, <laughs> now six four is a small a small guard. So just to see these guys uh, be able to, to to fly and do everything uh, they can do at six seven six eight seven foot is definitely amazing. I know, I know you play right field, but if you played left field, what, what's the key defensively with that green monster behind you? What, what, what do you got to be aware of if you're out there? Uh, <laughs> to be completely honest, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> you're I never over I there? Just, I don't you never talk to the stuff. left fielder? I mean, yeah, I mean, I talk to him, but we don't talk about baseball, so we talk about everything else. And when you have one of the best left fielders in baseball, they they nearly swept the gold gloves for the outfield they did. this That's year. Awesome. You had Mookie, you had Jackie, and Andrew Benatendi was a finalist. They nearly swept for gold gloves. Benny was a basketball player. Benny was a basketball Benny player in Arkansas. Player, yeah. That's right. And that worked out well for him, too, with that choice <laughs> when it came to baseball. 
Here's the one time you hear my name in the same sentence as Andrew Benatendi. Jimmy Dykes and Andrew Benatendi both went to Arkansas. That's right. It kind of stops at that point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, at least you guys have thought about it. For baseball fans who want to know when your clock starts with baseball, you had a little baby girl. Mm -hmm. uh, like, how, how are you preparing, and when does that really start for you, or has it started, you know, weeks or months ago? Um, well, we played an extra month this year, so right. everything kind of got delayed. I really didn't start. I mean, I started working out some in, in, in December, but it's kind of slow. Um, but I really haven't started doing much until, you know, kind of January this year. Usually it's December when I start, but this year it was January. I'm trying to rest up. I mean, I think the most important thing to do is, is to kind of rest because they say, you know, it, it's that carryover from the next year where it seems like guys are still tired. So hopefully uh, our strength guys do a good job of getting us back ready. That's Joe Madden's big deal. After they uh, won the World Series and NLCS, rest, you know, rest, rest, yeah. rest. You kind of like that. You're good with that. I'm good. I'm good with rest. I can I'm rest. Good <laughs> I'm good at the game. You're good resting. I'm good with it. <laughs> Look, you're, you're an electrifying baseball player. Give me an athlete from another sport that you like really enjoy watching just because of how electrifying they are as an athlete. Anybody come mm, to mind? There's something about James Harden a minute ago going for 30. James Harden is obviously a great basketball player, but if we're talking about like athletes. I got to think like like the Westbrook. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Russell Westbrook. Somebody like that. Um, hey, if you want to see the next Wilson. Russell Russell Westbrook, go to Belmont tomorrow night. Murray State's in town. They got a point Ooh. guard named Ja Morant that, that I, I think is going to be in the conversation for a number one overall pick. That, that, that kid is phenomenal. With Murray State, I, yes. I, I watched one game. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's the, the real, real deal. deal. He's the real deal. Yes. Oh, obviously Zion. You're talking about athletes. Right. Mount Zion. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him live. Are you nervous right now with under nine to go and your team's tied? Yeah, I mean, if I'm Tennessee, yeah. I feel like if I'm Vanderbilt, you know, I'm, I'm playing with all the confidence in the world. They're getting stops. I mean, Tennessee call this little, house uh, money. Yeah, for sure. I mean. Good. Oh, and a dunk. That one went down. Matthew Moyer. I thought he was a point guard. I thought he was a guard when he came in. <laughs> With the two big fellas, Shitu on the bench, Wetzel on the bench, they grab the lead. You have to follow the scouting report, Mookie. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> Schofield three, way off. Ready? That's not who they are. No, they are seven for jump shots yeah. on the road, and that's not typically what Tennessee does. They got Williams coming back in. He's he's really good. <laughs> he sees uh, he's Grant good. Williams yeah, about good. ten feet from us. <laughs> Would you get him the ball when he comes in? For sure. <laughs> Every time. That, like, that, uh, that, that, that uh, spin baseline dunk was woo. Offensive. Well, I didn't see a foul there, but I do see Mookie Betts here. Hey, thank you very much for being with us. Yes, Congratulations on the baby me. girl. Thank you. Good yeah, for you. Thanks, Mookie. Good Enjoy to see you, the man. rest thank of the offseason, yeah. and we'll see you at spring training. Yes, sir. Good luck to your Tennessee Vols. Great game here. A flush over Alexander, as rare as that is. Vanderbilt looks to knock off number one Tennessee for the second time in 11 years. <laughs>
It kills 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria that can build up in your mask, hose, and reservoir. I don't have to push a button or anything. I just put the mask in the chamber, close the lid, and it runs automatically. So clean is has been a lifesaver. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks. Try it risk-free for 30 days. Even shipping is free. Call 1-800-436-4916 to take advantage of this limited time offer. I would recommend the SoClean machine to anyone else. It is that good of a machine. It has made that big a difference in my life. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. Even shipping is free. Call 1-800-436-4916 or go to SoClean.com. Sean Farnham, Donald Cup from the Bristol studio. LSU looking for eight straight wins. They undefeated in SEC play. play. Nas Reed on the block. Yeah, just so strong, so athletic, able to finish. LSU's done a nice job. Trevor Waters, no turnovers in the game. Eight-point game, though. Tom Crean's crew not going quietly into that good night. Houston putting it on East Carolina right now. Armani Brooks lead the way with 11 points, and his running mate, Corey Davis, got nine. Ravi, back to you. Welcome back, everybody. What a game. Vanderbilt, 0-5 in SEC play, looking for their first conference win against the number one team in the country. As Tennessee just becomes number one this week. Vandy hit six of the last seven field goals. They double Schofield, and he's going to get fouled, and Bryce Drew right in front of us raises his hands. Unnecessary foul. They had him trapped over there, Jimmy. The double team that time did come with conviction, but you've got to come over with elbows at your ears is how you teach it and reach for the lights. They got on top of Grant a little too much, and again, his ability to throw through double teams, very important for this Tennessee ball club. Double bonus and big-time foul trouble for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Grant Williams is drawing about eight fouls per 40 minutes. He's a high fallible guy because of his brute strength his quickness where they put him on the floor how they move him around right, Williams knocks them both down 59 59 seven and a half to play Wetzel and Chitu the two best players for Vanderbilt as far as interior play goes have been on the bench with four fouls for the last four minutes First guy curls, second guy dribble handoff or handoff. Come back around for the third option. A lot of contact there with the big body knee Ponds. Nothing called. Where Ponds blew it up, didn't he? You have no part of that handoff action. Five on the shot clock. Lee far away from the basket. Tries to go by Williams and gets the roll. They've taken advantage of that switch now. Five or six times in this game. They get a four or five switch set on Saban Lee. His speed takes over. Son of the former NFL running back amply showing the terrific speed and how tough is that move mm. from Grant Williams. Those are grown man baskets on the road. You're feeling some pressure. Stay with who you are. Warrior three. That's way off and it's going to be Tennessee ball. Watch Saban Lee. There's the switch. Now it's a one to five switch right now with Williams playing the five spot or actually the four spot. But Saban Lee is driving the switch. And on the other end, the ball fake, the lift, and the quick spin ability of Grant Williams. Really hard to handle him in the middle part of the floor. Rick Barnes loves Grant Williams in close games down the stretch, handling that rock in the middle third. All right, so here we are with 6.30 left. He brings Shitu back in with four fouls and Wetzel. Right time to do that? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, in your 0 5 in the league right now. Well, no, not much tonight from Schofield, have we? Nope. This not is another at three. Admiral Schofield, one of seven from the floor. That's just, it's, it's double up action, it's high horns, elbow series, hammer pass to the corner three. Bang. Save and Lee with a kick and a three with a fist pump from Aaron Neesmith. 64 61 Vandy. And a kick. Back to the speed of Saban Lee is in that guy's corner right now. He has the advantage with zero in white with a basketball. His slippery ability, his speed, and his vision right now to that far corner, a right-handed shooter on the left corner. That's the hot spot right now for Vanderbilt. Lee Smith averages nine a game. He's got 21. They've got their largest lead at three, and they continue to struggle from the field. 
not the shot that Tennessee wanted with 24 on the shot clock. Jordan Bone gets set to come back in for Tennessee. Every trip's a big trip. It'll stay Vanderbilt ball. This one has certainly exceeded expectations. Huge expectations for Kansas and Kentucky. A sonic blockbuster, all part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. It's presented by Continental. Six on the shot clock. Lee's been able to break down that defense. He spins in a lane, and this time it doesn't go. Rebound to Tennessee. Just a high sprint out ball screen, all designed to get the switch again for Saban Lee to attack. How about that? Wenzel challenged with four fouls. No foul called on him. And it'll stay Tennessee basketball. Wenzel goes straight up. Made it hard for Lamonte Turner. Tennessee has several lob options off their out of bounds under package. Normally it's more of a spread court situation for him. Grant Williams setting up camp down low. They get it to him, and he tries to go to work. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Wetzel. Look at the reaction from Bryce Drew. A huge call with 5.04 to go in the game. Bryce Drew felt like that Wetzel just threw up a, a really tall wall, and Grant Williams kind of went through the wall. He's so good at feeding that low post block. And Bryce Drew knows how critical the call that was. He's given an earful right now to Terry Oglesby. Take a look at the foul. A lot of referees at home. See what you guys and gals would have called, if anything. That's not a foul. No. I, I, I think Wetzel's going straight up. And you just, that, that's a play on. I didn't see the contact above uh, around the basketball. It's that lean back ability that Williams has to get into your body that yep. really frees him up. So I asked you with 636 was it the time to bring him in. He ends up playing a minute and 32 yeah. seconds before he fouls out of the game. Shitu stays on the floor, number 11. He's got four fouls as well. Williams starting to assert himself, his point total to 24 in the game. Number one on the road, very similar to 11 years ago when Tennessee held on to that number one ranking for 48 hours and they lost it in this building. And Memorial Magic happened again. Once again, end of shot clock with five. Here's shit two. Spins, great dish. Wow, what a pass. And a foul. He found Cleavon Brown and he laid it in. Simi Chateau this time gets pushed off the elbow, but then he goes to work. The floor is opened up. The help has a long ways to come to double the basketball on the, on the bounce. And Chateau, not only with great spin ability for a 6'10 kid, but then when he felt the defensive pressure coming, the simple drop off and a huge play at the rim for Vanderbilt. Nightmarish game for Admiral Schofield. Yes. He goes to the bench with four fouls. He's got four points. He's one of seven from the floor. Shot an air ball on his first attempt tonight, and it just has never been in a rhythm in this building at all. Rounds free throw. He completes the three-point play. Vanderbilt up by four, 430 to go. Williams spins. He got so high. There's nobody that could have blocked that no, shot. No, not, not at all. The, the, the foot fake, the jab series that Williams put on him, you, you just enough of a lean to get his defender leaning to the left, and he comes back right. And the elevation and the release point of his jump shot, like you said, unblockable. Saban Lee. 
They're hitting their shots, making their plays down the stretch. Williams to kick, Turner's three, that's no good. Alexander goes up for it. Whose ball is it? It'll stay with Tennessee. Huge play by Kyle Alexander to keep the ball alive. He's so good at tipping it to himself. Memorial magic. Will it happen again? I was here 11 years ago. It felt a lot like this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hyundai. Walking a dog can add thousands of steps to your day. Walking this many, that can be rough on Pam's feet, knees, and lower back. That's why she wears Dr. Scholl's orthotics. They relieve pain and give her the comfort to move more so she can keep up with all her best friends. Dr. Scholl's born to move. The Agent Lee uniforms are in. Why is the number so high? There's over 19,000 State Farm agents. Mm. I wanted number 13,171, but Ty from Sioux Falls is in town, and he called dibs. What's up, buddy? Ty can't shoot. No, you're fine. Right now, Domino's has a large $5.99 carryout special. With a deal this amazing, you're going to need a ton of boxes. This week, carry out large two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each, only at Domino's. Nothing outlasts Energizer Ultimate Lithium. Hey, you can't do that. Can, can he do that? Uh, yeah, he's good. <clears throat> Energizer Ultimate Lithium. It's the number one longest-lasting battery. Free, 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 free. That's right. TurboTax free is free. Free, 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 free. Get great deals on great gear at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's Cabin Fever Sale. Like savings of 33% or more on select men's and ladies' tops and bottoms. And new price breaks on select national brand outerwear for the family. February 26, 2008, Tennessee was number one for about 48 hours. Vanderbilt was ranked 14th in the country. They had some terrific players. Vanderbilt, after Chris Lofton hit a three, missed a free throw with 1.8, and that would be the end of it. The Commodores knocked off number one Bruce Pearl's team after they survived the game on Saturday, got home around 3 a.m., practice on Sunday, rolled into town and were rolled up by the Commodores and now the question is is it happening again to Tennessee against number one teams eight and 18 all time how about of the 26 games 19 have been against the number one Kentucky <laughs> team now you oh wow what a play out of the break to Bowden we talked about it at the last baseline out of bounds under for Tennessee. They are a lob threat at all times and really from all four spots. Bound at 6'5", just went up and punched it. He comes from the far side and makes it a foot race. Grant Williams and Kyle Alexander kind of seal off their guys and clear it out. Bam! What a play out of the break. And it's about a 50-50 split here in Nashville with the folks from Knoxville wearing their orange. And the black and gold anchored down, boys and girls, with 3.20 to go. Vandy leading 70 to 67. Well, Rick Barnes just, he stole two points right there. He won that coming out of timeout. He got Bowden, who was a terrific athlete in the far corner. And he said, you two bigs, Duck in, seal off, and free up space. And a beautiful pass by Jordan Bone right in front of the rim. The timing and the height of the pass was on point, on target. It's a three-point game. Six foot three. And one of the last things they do in their shoot-arounds is Bowden will get a ball. He will bounce it on the floor about five or six feet from the basket, go up and dunk it as the rest of the team <laughs> jumps up with him. Tonight before the game, when he attempted it, he missed the dunk. He certainly had no problem with that one. The most impressive flush of the night. But this is what happened before the game. Well, he made the one that counts, right? He certainly made the one that counts. And now Jimmy with 321 to go. Shift who's been terrific with his interior passing. A lot of the Vanderbilt 
many shots have come with three to two seconds left in the shot clock. They have. They've made Tennessee work tonight defensively. No reason to change your offense if you're Bryce Drew. Stay with your double up elbow series. You're making good plays off of that. You have dribble handoff actions. You've got the spin move of Chateau driving the basket. And the speed of Saban Lee continues to be a big storyline in this game. He's taking the ball, Ravi, anywhere he wants to take it right now yeah. against that Tennessee defense. And he's making good decisions at the rim instead of forcing shots. Vanderbilt one time out left. Tennessee's got three. And the possession arrow is to Tennessee. Again with seven on the shot clock. And Shitsu has the ball picked up. Four on the shot clock. Contested baseline jumper goes. Matt Ryan stays hot. It's a guy you want shooting off the bounce if you're Tennessee, and he made one off the bounce. Two in orange will get a touch. Middle part of the floor. Let him make a play. All the way to the rack and a foul called. A chance for a three-point play for Grant Williams. It's almost automatic with under four to go in a close game for Tennessee. It's all about players. Here's what I'm talking about with Ryan. Make him make a shot off the bounce. He may have slid his foot actually and got away with the travel at the end. But Rick Barnes says, this is my guy. Put him in the middle of the floor. Take away help. Keep shooters with gravity ability around him and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Grant Williams has 28 points. He is 14 of 14 from the free throw line. 15 of 15 from the free throw line. There is no junior in Division I who has made or taken more free throws than Grant Williams. Over 30% of his points this season have come from the free throw stripe. And tonight, 15 of his 29 from Wait. the line. His voice is loud in the huddle right now, and his play has been loud on the floor, trying to will Tennessee right now to a road win with a number one ranking beside their name. His ability to spin with quickness going to his right and back to his left. And the jabs, the, the, the jab series by this kid 15 feet and in is really terrific. And then again, in the middle part of the floor, Rick Barnes just trust this guy to make a play. He closed out Florida with a middle of the floor pass. And right now he's driving the ball. And those are big boy baskets. You look at Grant Williams, Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, Ja Morant. To me, those are the four guys right now that should be right there in every yeah. conversation for National Player of the Year. Think about Tennessee this season. They lost in overtime to Kansas. They beat number one Gonzaga in that game. Williams fouled out. He had 16, 12, and seven assists. Schofield ended up with 30 in that game. Bill Self of Kansas said after the Tennessee victory that they had in overtime, he didn't necessarily think that they would face another player as good as Grant Williams. All season long, remember that game was in the beginning of the season. Yep. Well, if you're Vanderbilt, you don't change anything. You change nothing that you're doing offensively. You stay with that double up elbow series. You force Tennessee to react with their switching defense right now. If you're Tennessee and you continue to switch one through five, you better come together. If not, you will give up a backdoor wide open layup with this lifted Vanderbilt offense. Lee's got 17, Neesmith 21, Ryan 12, and contributions from a lot of players. Should do with foul trouble on the floor with eight. Here it is. The first guy backdoor cuts. The second guy will wrap the ball into a dribble handoff. Well defended that time by Tennessee. Comfort zone for them. Eight seconds on the shot clock. They've made a lot of them. The little step through, the dish, the dunk! Brown with a flush. What a split by Saban Lee. What looked like a pretty tight double team on the ball. Just a little bit of an opening. Bowden on the curl, he misses. Rebound, Vanderbilt. Rivalry game within the state on the road. What happens with 138 to go? They're going to get a foul on the floor on Lamonte Turner. 
But have you watched Saban Lee? He comes off this on ball action, and, and it, it's not a tight toe to toe double up, hard heads in the middle of the floor. Grant Williams leaves just enough room for Saban to slip through it, and they talked about it last night in their film session. They said that Saban Lee is terrific at splitting ball screen coverage. 69% free throw shooter. The first one is Nylon. 75-70 Vanderbilt. 92 seconds to play. Schofield's been off all night and misses another one. Williams down hard and he may be hurt. He's in some serious pain. You can see the grimace. Remember last year, midway through the season, he hurt his back. It impacted the way he played in Tennessee the rest of the season. Now there's the, the it's the hook and hold play is what they're mm. going to be looking at and what Grant just couldn't catch himself at all. There's the hook what they're looking at by 15 and white correct and the hard fall. Do you see anything here? I see a arm underneath. It didn't look like it was a hook. Well, th I, that, that's what they're going to be seeing. Does 15 go under the arm of Grant Williams and hook him? Such a hard call for officials to make, and Pat Adams and Terry Oglesby right now taking a look at it. Only two officials can be at the monitor at the same time, and then they rotate out of it. Keep one official on the floor to keep an eye on the on the team huddles. You can almost feel the building shake when Williams, who yes. did nothing to support himself on that ball, hit the ground. Ravi, normally these plays, it's the guy that came underneath yep. that ultimately gets the call to go against them from what we've seen so far since back in November when we've had the hook and hold emphasis in the game. They have four different looks at it through DV Sport that they can look at. And actually four at the same time to give them different angles. And the hook and hold for the viewer at home has to do when there are two players battling and their arms ultimately locked a lot of times recently it's led to significant injury so it's become a point of emphasis for the officials in college basketball to avoid that underarm hook and then you hold or pull you can see their arms are locked initially I see the hook by 15 and white I don't see the hold as they go up in the air for the ball this is a hard one to call and this is a veteran crew that and they, they've looked at it now for a good 90 seconds and just how do they interpret that action? Levon Brown 15 and Grant Williams had their arms hooked. Terry Oglesby after discussing it with his fellow officials going to explain it to the official score and then he will come over here and explain the call to Jimmy Dykes. Has upgraded to an F1. So they did call a flagrant one on Cleavon Brown. A hook and hold on 15 and white. Upgraded to an F1. A, a, a huge call. It goes in the favor of the number one team on the road, down six with 122 to go. So free throws in the ball. And but I think the question was their intent because players going for the rebound oftentimes have their arms get tangled. Yeah. Was their intent by Brown to hook? And as you said, you didn't see a hole. I, I did not. But again, officials, they, they can't judge intent. They, 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 they can't uh, they can't go down that path. I was at the officiating clinic back in October and J.D. Collins was very clear about call what you see. Yep. It's not about intent, what you thought the, the player was intending to do. In the eyes of the officials, it was a hook and a hold. And Grant Williams now still perfect from the free throw line. 16 of 16. So they will get the ball back. And have a four-point deficit. 
Williams is tied a season high with 31 points. A huge part of that ball game. You go right back to Williams. I looked for a lob right off the bat for Williams, right around the rim. Very, very well done. They are so good on baseline out of bounds under. They don't get in a rush. The out of bounds guy takes his time. And you just stack four guys in a line and say, Williams, you're the one guy going to the rim. Everybody else throw traffic at him. Loose ball, steal, Bowden to the rack, misses, rebound Vanderbilt. And a unnecessary turnover. Saban Lee got going too quick. Where was he going, Rav? He got a two-point lead. He's been so good in this game. I understand he felt like that he had numbers, but you have to understand time, score, and momentum. And man, that's one that... Uh, that clock right now moving is the most important thing for Vanderbilt. If you have a guaranteed two-on-one layup, but the ball just exploded out of Saban Lee going too fast. I'll tell you again, Grant Williams and Orange are going to get a touch on this possession. Instead, it's Schofield. He throws it up, and it rolls in to tie the game with 38 seconds to go. Just playing smash-mouth basketball as Tennessee around the rim right now with two mismatched guys. Bryce will probably call timeout. His elbow series has been really good to him. So he's going to bring his guys over and, and get with his coaches and talk about, if they're tracking it, where are we scoring right now off this elbow-high series? Is it the dribble handoff action? Is it is it isolating and letting our guy go one on one? You come out of that timeout right now if you're Bryce Drew with two or three options. He's telling his guys, I told you we could do it. He fed him confidence the entire first half. Now they're in a tie ball game with 32 to go. So Saban Lee after the Tennessee turnover. Watch his head. He felt like he was going to set up a lob. He had to go off of his foot and his frustration was obvious then they went to Schofield and he ultimately got it and basically threw it up to the rim you know and it rolled in Scho Schofield's guy actually went to double team Grant Williams too early and left Grant Williams wide open at the logo that's the respect and the gravity ability to to attract defenders to you that Grant Williams has in that Tennessee offense for Schofield only his second made field goal of the night he's two of nine from the floor Williams has been the star with 33 points First time all season, Tennessee has the number one next to its name. And the hook and hold led to two free throws, an inbounds play, and a 6-0 run. The deflection, Lamonte Turner nearly had the steal. Or if you switch off now, if you're Tennessee and you're still switching one through five, and Saban Lee gets the switch, you know he's going to attack. Seven-second shot and game clock differential. Here comes going to be a sprint-up ball screen to see if Tennessee switches. Hey, they've got what they want. Saban Lee guarded by a forward. Blocked at the rim. Here comes Bone. Ahead to Bowden. Blocked at the rim. What a play. Neesmith blocks it. Now a turnover. Williams smartly calls timeout with two seconds to go. A couple of bad turnovers late by Vanderbilt will allow Tennessee a chance to win it with two seconds to go. What a series. Vanderbilt gets exactly what they want. They get the switch out on Saban Lee, and Admiral Schofield comes over and says, not on our watch. And then the run down from behind. Rick Barnes was calling for contact on Bowden. It didn't happen. And the effort and the play behind ability by Neesmith up top. Boy, Grant Schofield, huge defensive play. Late against Alabama by Grant Williams, and that's all ball by Neesmith up top. He got it before that ball got on the glass, and the throw ahead, Grant Williams gets it and calls timeout. They have a side out of bounds play now opportunity. How many players call a timeout there versus just trying to take it and get a shot off? Only guys that had offers to Ivy League schools out of high school, like <laughs> Grant Williams. <laughs> so you look at the clock right now, and, and every tenth of a second is critical. I'm sure Pat and... Those guys will come to make sure is at 2.0, is at 2.1, 2.2. But from where the ball is going to be in bounds, Ravi, you want to try to get a direct throw 
to the block area and at least get yourself maybe to the free throw line. And they're checking the clock now. By the way, that block on the Vanderbilt shot was made by Grant Williams. The seventh block of the game for Tennessee. And once again, Terry Oglesby down on one knee to look at the replay to see where that clock will be set. It's, it's critical. Is, is it 2-0? Is it 2-3? Is it 2-5? Is it they felt like they lost a little time when the it's when the timeout was granted. That's, that's what you're looking for right now. Not when Grant called, but when it was granted. And boy, that could be a big difference of does a shot get off or does it not get off? Think about the last 45 seconds for Vanderbilt saving Lee with that turnover after the block the long outlet pass picked off by yes. Grant Williams. Clock, look at that the game clock stuck. It, got, it, it, it started it then stopped it looked like that initial pass was deflected which would start that clock. So that's really what they're looking at to see where the clock will ultimately be put. But the clock started then it stopped. It could be as much as the full second that they put back on this. Going back to that deflection when the game clock started. And then pause for, I don't know, half a second for a second. That's a huge catch by this officiating crew. Once again, setting the game 76-76. Vanderbilt out of timeouts, Tennessee. One left. They are number one in the country for the first time all season. That, of course, came out this week. Last time they were the number one team in the country, it lasted about 48 hours. They came to Vanderbilt in 2008 against a team that was ranked 14th, and they lost to Vanderbilt. In a game like this, you got the number one team unbeaten in conference against a Vanderbilt team that starts the season 0-5 in conference. And I get all the road game stuff, but boy, have they been clutch with their last end of shot clock makes. And where does Rick Barnes want to go with this ball? I mean, the ball is going to be somewhere out here, I don't know, within five or six feet of the timeline. What you don't want to do, Ravi, is throw that ball straight across that timeline and bring into play a, 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 a tip, steal a steal, Vanderbilt. and a dunk at the sure. buzzer by Vanderbilt. I want this ball, if I'm Tennessee, going towards their basket. At worst, you're going to overtime. It's 76 off. But can you run a play to isolate Grant Williams on the block? That's what I try to do. Can you throw it directly to Grant Williams at the mid post or the elbow area down and give him two seconds to operate with? Yeah, I think they're going to put 3.3 on the game clock. So that is a significant difference between two seconds. You're adding 1.3. Watch what happens on the inbounds play as it's deflected by Turner. Start stops. And they deduced that there was 1.3 that was yeah. not run off. That's the guy right there. Does Rick Barnes have some type of action to get him with a direct isolated pass to that low block, mid post, or elbow area? And with three seconds, he's got time to go to work. It's not so much about plays right now. It's about players. And you get the ball to your best dude, and two in orange is your best dude. Williams, shot, blocked! Rebound, no, and we'll go to overtime. Grant Williams, who elevates as well as anybody, getting an earful from his coach, Rick Barnes, as the shot was blocked. I think Grant settled. I know he did. He caught that thing and with a shot fake and just drive that basketball. And we talked about how difficult it is to block this kid's shot. Did a terrific job to be the second guy off the floor. And Grant Williams right here. He's got a chance for a ball fake and, and drive it, try to get a foul drawn, and he he settles for a contested shot. Levon Brown, the third block of the game for Vanderbilt. And overtime will be when this one is decided. I would have liked for Grant Williams to get that thing closer to the elbow and, and, and down lower. Then, then, then let his big body take over. What a job by Vanderbilt 
to send this thing into overtime. When you consider, like I said, all afternoon, you had to have some question marks. They're 0-5 coming in. Yep. They've lost five in a row. The belief right now, can we really take down the number one team? It started yesterday in their film session. I was in there with them, and Bryce was convincing them, we've had our best two or three days of practice. We are right right now to take down Tennessee tomorrow night. Right, so Rick Barnes mentioned that he gave an earful to Grant Williams. Watch what happens right after that shot is blocked. Suggesting that Schofield, he was waiting for a pass. It looked, it, looked, it looked like it was, yeah. The defense, uh, again, all eyes on Grant Williams. He had time to make a pass. I don't, I don't know where Schofield was, but boy, that's that uh, tough, hard coaching that Rick Barnes puts on his guys daily. They accept it. They don't roll their eyes. They don't shrink from the moment. They say, yes, sir, and they move on. Tennessee has been in some tight games in spite of the fact their average margin of victory in SEC games is over 20. The recent Alabama game in which you saw they won 71 68. Well, Vanderbilt now gets a timeout to use in the five minute overtime period. Tennessee has two. Boy right now if you're if you're Vanderbilt you're, you're talking about offensively. This is what they can't guard. And you just send that message to your guys. They can't guard us in this building right now. Stay with our stuff. Stay with our elbow series. Drive them, save them. Use your speed. If you have open threes, knock them down. Chatu, drive them from the elbows. If you're Tennessee and Rick Barnes, you're talking about toughness and making sure we get the ball back in the paint around the rim on our offensive end. With the five minutes on the clock for overtime, again, Shitu and Brown each with four fouls for Vanderbilt. Schofield, four fouls for Tennessee. Yeah, a fifth foul on Shitu would be a big deal in this Huge. game because he has been a handful no matter who they've had on him. Shitu has had the ability to drive the ball, spin, and make plays for a 6'10 kid. Hey, who's watching this game closely? Kentucky, who will obviously have Kansas this weekend but they come here next week to take on Vanderbilt for anybody that thought that a game against Vanderbilt because they're 0 and 5 would be easy on the road forget about it yep well the opening tip is critical in overtime because the number of possessions you have to play with and count on probably both hands this is a big play right here I'm telling you start the start the overtime Smith falls, but his pass is long enough to allow Lee to get it. Shit two. Hangs, fires it high off the backboard, and not a good shot. No, it took an off-balance shot going to his left. Grant Williams, when he trails the play like that, he's the play caller. He's the quarterback that sees the action in front of him. He's got it. He gets it to go, and he gets a foul. Rebbe, he started the possession, Grant Williams did trailing the play, and Rick Barnes gives him four or five play calls a game to use as that transition trailer. And he, what he wanted was the ball off of a Lamonte Turner wrap of the screen. Well, that's a hard call to go against Vanderbilt on their home floor. This kid again, perfect, right? From the free throw line tonight still. Hasn't missed one, he has taken 18 of them. Big set here for Vanderbilt. Got to come away with some points. Three-point shooter. In and out. Williams, another rebound. They had a good shot for Matt Ryan, but the friendly home rims didn't take it. Boy, Tennessee got lucky. They did not chase and trail or caboose. The best shooter that Vanderbilt has on the floor. Wide open three that did everything but go down. Watch the jab series by Williams. Fade away. Grant Williams can't get it to go. That ball is going to go to Vanderbilt. Looked like it had tipped off the hands of Chateau. That's the look on Alexander's face. They can't come to the monitor, though, until under two to go. That's, that's off Vanderbilt. Is that not off the left paw of Chateau? Play on. Lee 
Isaiah Speed's been a big factor in this game in the second half. This offense is a headache to guard. Get two in the lane for three. Instead, they kick for three. Another one in and out. Williams flies to save it. Tennessee's got it. They throw to Alexander, and he loses it. Taking two threes, missed them both. Now Neesmith launches. Tie game! Aaron Neesmith hits a three. 11 years ago, it was Shane Foster jumping up and making shots against Tennessee. Tonight, it's been this kid. Williams has 36 points. On the floor, foul. Boy, a heavy dose of ISO basketball for Grant Williams on that right block. He's catching it, he's going to work, not only off of the face-up face -up game, but the back-of-the-basket spin, and there's Neesmith. Shooting like he belongs in the Neesmith Hall of Fame one of these days. I like what you did there. And he shoots it over Kyle Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> he is. A terrific player, a terrific human being, high character, works his butt off, and he has come up big against the number one team tonight. Levon Brown will come out of the game. It was his foul. It was his fifth. He gets a good ovation from the crowd. And now back to the line, Grant Williams. He sinks these two, who will be 20 of 20. That, that has to be the best performance from the free throw line all year long in college ball. For sure. I mean, the best you could do is tie it, right? <laughs> 20 for 20 and a career-high 38 points for Grant Williams with 2.20 to go. 81-79, number one Tennessee over Vanderbilt. Shitu continues to get trapped with that ball. Lee gets it down low. He throws it up off the window, and we're tied again. Good job by Shatu to roll to the rim off the ball screen of Saban Lee, and Saban Lee with a nice back dribble to give him space to feed the post. Bone. Too strong. Rebound. Vanderbilt ball. That's just not the shot that Rick Barnes wants. I mean, it wasn't under five to go, and that ball should have kept moving and make Vanderbilt work a little bit. I'm talking about saving. You see the little bit of a back dribble right there, Ravi, just to give him enough space and enough time for Chateau to show his numbers to the passer. And that, I believe that went off of Bowden's left paw at the end of that play. And we're under two minutes, so they can look at it again in overtime to make sure. It certainly looked like it on that replay that it did hit off the hand of Bowden. Yep. Prior to that, Bryce Drew was looking for a call on the Shitu layup, which would have perhaps led to a three-point play. Bryce Drew has been an inspirational leader throughout the course of this game. Remember, this game was 15-2 when it started, and he has kept his team in it. Here's his last speech. Refrain college basketball shocked the world. This would border on shocking a Vanderbilt team that came in winless in conference against the number one team that has played like a number one team all season long and seemed to be getting better as the season wore on. There was little indication you'd end up with a game 81 81 in overtime between these two teams, regardless home or road. Very little. It started yesterday afternoon about five o'clock. I think I was in their film session with them talking about Vanderbilt. And Bryce was very simple, very clear in his presentation. This is how we have to play Tennessee. You have to believe we can do it. We're coming off of great practices. We've been close, and he has continued to feed his guys throughout this game. He's not, he's not talking X and O's as much in his huddle as Rick Barnes is. He's talking about belief, and let's win this thing. Right. 
It is Vanderbilt ball, 134. Just watch Bowden, who outjumped everybody, but his left hand right there at the end seemed to deflect off of his hand, which gives it to the Commodores. Tennessee sets up with some full court pressure. Just to make Saban Lee work a little bit, bringing this thing up. Nine ties, six lead changes. The double up horns, double up high action. The elbow series has been a steady dose from Vanderbilt in this ball game. Lee trapped down low, nearly walked with it. Still ten on the shot clock. Get the ball to Saban Lee. He's going to pull up. Too hard. Uh, rebound tapped out, and it's Bowden. Minute to go. He takes it. Doesn't make it Vanderbilt ball. Boy, Grant Williams down the other end, never really made it down to the offensive side with 38 points. At two possessions in a row, Grant Williams hasn't gotten a touch. Lee in traffic. Oh, Williams nearly picked it, but we're going to have a foul and free throws. Grant Williams picks up his third. Saban Lee has been so slippery and shifty. Grant Williams wraps him around the waist first and then comes up. It's the right call. This kid's ability, talking about Saban Lee, to take the ball really anywhere he's wanted to take it. He has split double screens. He's operated off one-on-one. -on -one. He's been very good off the high ball screen action. He's wrapped screens himself. 70% free throw shooter, Jimmy. He yeah. is 6 of 9 tonight. Vandy has made 11 of 17 from the free throw line. He's actually a scoring guard that has been forced to play the point guard spot with the injury to Darius Garland. You, would, you wouldn't know it tonight because no, he, he has handled that spot right. magically. He went from point guard, and then Garland showed up to shooting guard. Yep. Garland gets hurt. He goes back to point guard. Missed the first. Makes the second. Williams camps out, spin move, baseline. And, and the great. foul! Are you 40th kidding me? point. Are you kidding me, Carl Rabbit? That's what National Player of the Year do. The game is on the line. Everyone in the building know the ball is going to Grant Williams on the right block. He leans back, gets his body into you, and all Bryce Drew can do is drop his head and watch. Wow. I think what is not said so far, and Williams flexing there, and you see that from a lot of college basketball players. Williams worked as hard as anybody, along with Admiral Schofield, to get their bodies into shape to deal with the rigors of the SEC. And now he's got 40 points and will go to the free throw line, trying to make his 21st free throw. Let's go to the Sports Center studio here with 31 seconds to go, John and Steve. All right, Ravi, thanks very much. Coming up top of the hour, the women's semifinals of the Australian Open, and James Harden streak still alive. Get 36 at the half. That's good in the NBA. A potential season-ending injury to Victor Oladipo. That's not so good. We're going back to national. No, not good news at all for Victor Oladipo. Here, John and Steve, Tennessee 83, Vanderbilt 82. Grant Williams has 40 points tonight, boys and girls. He camps out in that low box, and it's over. Again, no one feeds the post off the bounce better than the Tennessee Volunteers. They can pass it from all five spots. They can post it from three spots. And Grant Williams just goes to work. If you get your body on him on either shoulder, he's going to lean back, he's going to feel you, and he's going to spin off of you. That time, there wasn't much contact for him to feel off of. as more of an instinctive play. This kid right now came into the night number 15 in the nation, drawing almost eight fouls per game. Yeah. He will be in the top 10 in the nation after this game tonight. The last SEC player to win back-to-back -back Player of the Year awards was the big, nasty Corliss Williamson. If, in fact, Grant Williams wins it this season and decides to come back for his senior year, the only two to ever win the SEC Player of the Year award three times, the great Bernard King and Pistol Pete Maravich. You've got to believe the way he's playing, not just tonight, but this season, he's the odds-on favorite. It was he and Admiral Schofield in the conference for player of the year. This is a separator-type game. Yeah, it is. Ravi, this kid's stepping to the line, trying to give his team the lead by making his 21st free throw in a row yeah. in a high-pressure rivalry game. 
Number one is beside our name now. The target has grown bigger on our back, and so has the performance by Grant Williams. 21 of 21 and 41 points. They have not touched the rim. It's pure. The junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, having the game of his life. And you keep Saban Lee out of the paint. Ball knocked out of bounds. We're going to get a foul. It looks like it's going to be on Lamonte Turner. Terry Oglesby goes over and talks with Terry Weimer to confirm it's on Oglesby. Williams only has three fouls, but you can see that the fans here and Bryce Drew leading the charge. Well, Bryce Drew is making the argument that it was unnecessary contact on a player that had left his feet, maybe in a vulnerable position. And I don't know if Oglesby and Pat Adams and Terry Weimer saw it like that, and we'll look at it. To me, Lamonte Turner comes in. He gets all ball to start with there, and then he comes down on the arm. Grant Williams just comes over and jumps up with an illegal position inside the arc. And Bryce Drew is not going to win the argument. Back to the free throw line, and obviously, given the time and the score, huge free throws for Saban Lee. First one too strong again. A little bit of a hitch in there, wasn't there? It wasn't one smooth motion. He has been outstanding, Saban Lee, for 45 minutes in this game. And the free throw box off is critical right now. Critical. And the free throw miss go get by Vanderbilt just as important if you can go do it. One point game. They're going to sub. Nope. Turner's not going to come into the game. Schofield's going to stay in. They just took him out prior to that free throw. And, and now I think Rick Barnes is going to call a timeout. Yeah, he's got to get his right personnel in. And it's Tennessee with a <clears throat> one-point lead, 21 seconds to go. Got to get the ball in cleanly. And if you do, I will ask you as my assistant coach, if you're Tennessee, who do you want the ball in the hands of? Uh, the guy that's made 21 straight <laughs> free throws? Yeah, I'm going to give you a raise. That's, a, a, that's the right call. Wow. Now, now can Tennessee get him the ball because you're going to have to probably make a second cut to get open in this thing right now. You're going to be careful this is not a push off of your Tennessee trying to get yourself open. But Grant Williams will be the guy right now. Obviously, he's made 21 in a row. And he's feeling no pressure in this game. 41 points in the game for Grant Williams. Go back to the end of regulation where both teams really had chances to win this one. Williams made that layup. Schofield threw one up and rolled in, only his second bucket of the night. And then the big block by Neesmith with six seconds led to Vandy having it and turning it over. Grant Williams called the timeout. They added 1.3 seconds on the clock, and he settled for a three, which was blocked. And that got us to overtime. Rick Barnes wondering why Grant, who's been so good tonight, didn't get that ball to Schofield. You know, Schofield was kind of covered up in that replay. I don't know if this play was designed for Schofield to come off a hard cut. Well, that's what you thought would happen. Grant Williams does a great job, Ravi. He had his back to the baseline, kind of decoying himself that he was going to be the screener, and just a quick hard cut like a wide receiver on a comeback action to get his numbers shown to the out-of-bounds guy. Can he go 23 out of 23 from the free throw line in this game? Can't play defense on free throws, and it's interesting. If you look behind the basket he is shooting at, the predominant color is actually orange. So in so many college environments, it becomes such a difficult free throw shot. But here in Nashville, it's predominantly orange and white. So nobody's doing anything to distract the free throw shooter. Grant Williams. I will point out that that one actually hit the rim. <laughs> the first. 21 in a row did not hit the rim. He's made 22 straight. And another one that rattles home 23 for 23 from the free throw line. 
43 points for Grant Williams. Three-point game. Heels above the three if you're Tennessee right now. Good switch out by Grant Williams. Tough shot from the corner. No foul called. Tennessee has it. Uh -oh, and now uh -oh. we got some fisticuffs and elbows. Ravi, this is going to be huge. Bone seemed to throw an elbow yes. on Aaron Neesmith, and this will certainly be looked at by the officials. Alante Turner gets involved as well. Grant Williams moving his team back to their bench. They try to get the ball to Matt Ryan for a three. Tennessee was switching everything, and Grant Williams right there to, to force a tough one. That's not a foul. He's straight up. His elbows are at his ears. But right here at the end, uh, that, that I'm telling you, J Jordan Bone put his team possibly in a really bad spot right now. The game is pretty much going to be over as they come to this monitor. The call, the, the, it's, it's going to be a, a dead ball. Could be a contact technical foul. There's an intentional foul by me of Neesmith to wrap him up. That was not a play on the ball. There's a lot right now for Terry Oglesby and Pat Adams and Terry Weimer to work through. And Neesmith has been ejected from the game already. And that uh, has to do probably with something he said. He's been thrown out of the game. That according to Pat Adams. And now once again, we've seen a lot of this in sports recently with the NFL playoffs and obviously this game a lot of video reviews but this one is huge Jordan bone got the rebound the whistle was called and in the game percentage wise is going to be over Tennessee is going to win the ball game but then the join and the grabbing occurs and Jordan bone comes hard with the elbow a lot to talk through going to call a common foul on Neesmith and then according to Terry Oglesby after that they just got tangled up and there will be no extra calls other than the common foul which will send Tennessee to the free throw line. Neesmith has apparently been ejected at least according to what Pat Adams told us and we'll have to see if that's in fact fact because he's still on the floor. So they saw it as just a common foul on 24 white. And now the so Neesmith stays in the game. He was not thrown out. That was a crazy scenario that, sure could, have, that could have escalated, in my opinion, to a couple of F1s. And Jordan Bone closes this thing out from that free throw line. Bone an 85% free throw shooter. Huge first free throw, four point lead, 5.4 seconds to go. Has Tennessee been from the free throw line tonight? Not just Grant Williams, but overall. They've been outstanding. Williams 23 of 23. The team has taken 32 and missed only three of them. There's the three. That one misses, and Tennessee will survive and stay number one, winning 88 83 over Vanderbilt in overtime. Another tremendous effort in vain for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Yeah, they did so many things so well tonight, did Vanderbilt. Their offense, still Tennessee is trying to figure it out. They chased it more than they guarded it. And a historical performance for Grant Williams in this building tonight. He had 43 points. He made 23 of 23 from the free throw line. And the reigning SEC co-player of the year has certainly stamped his name on that trophy again with this performance tonight. Tennessee's won 13 in a row. And they do it on the road in what was at times very friendly and other times a very hostile place to play. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire crew, including our 
producer Scott Matthews. I'm Carl Ravitch. Hope you've enjoyed this one. The SEC is special again this year. Time now for SportsCenter.